Moments made easy. That's totally Target. It rained most of the afternoon here in Athens, Georgia, but the good news is the rain is out of here at Foley Field, and we've got SEC Network Baseball tonight as the number five LSU Tigers in town to take on the Georgia Bulldogs in the start of the final SEC regular season series of the year. Here's a look at the road to Hoover. SEC tournament starts on Tuesday night. Here are the top 10 teams that have already clinched, and these are what their seeds would be as of today. You see LSU would be the number three seed. Now to the other story. There are three teams battling for the final two spots. Georgia is in that group. The Bulldogs' magic number to clinch is two over Mississippi State. And good evening, I'm Matt Stewart, joined by former Georgia Bulldogs All-SEC catcher, assistant coach, and three-time minor league all-star Jason Jacobs. And lots to play for this weekend. LSU still gunning for their first SEC championship since 2017. If nothing else, a top four seed in the SEC tournament and missed that first day of the tournament. Georgia still trying to get in the SEC tournament and also an NCAA regional, although they've got a lot to do to get there. Yeah, both teams coming off a disappointing series losses in their last weekend, so trying to get that bad taste out of their mouth and finish strong. Georgia had clawed their way back into the conversation about a regional, has fallen out a little bit, so looking to get back on track with that. Going to face a very good team, very potent offense at LSU, and a very tough pitcher tonight in Paul Skeens. Yeah, we've got a great pitching matchup tonight, a very interesting one. You mentioned Paul Skeens, maybe the top pitcher in all of college baseball, probably is. And Jarvis Evans going for the Bulldogs, a freshman who's making his first ever SEC start. I think that could play to his advantage a little bit. Got a cool, calm demeanor going up against a very potent offense in LSU. Lead the league in 10 offensive categories. And just top to bottom, very tough, but he's got a good change up, pitches well, and again, just a freshman, so a little green and not aware of the situation as much. Well, you mentioned that LSU batting order, six right-handers and three left-handers, number one in 10 SEC statistical categories, as you mentioned, including a 314 batting average and 9.6 runs per game, and right there in the middle, you have the projected number one overall pick in the 2023 MLB draft, in Dylan Cruz, who has reached base in a phenomenal 56 consecutive games. Yeah, it's a, just looking at his numbers, there's nothing, nothing that stands out more than that on-base percentage at 592. So he's getting on almost 60% of the time he comes to the plate, he's finding his way on base. So again, Evans is going to have his handful. I think the righties in the lineup 6-3, to three, I think that matches in his favor as his, bit, his best pitch is that changeup. It's a great equalizer. Fastball is not going to blow you away, 88 to 90. Might touch a 91 in there, but he's able to locate it. He can get guys out with elevation off of that fastball because the changeup protects it. Gavin Dugas leading things off for the LSU Tigers, their graduate second baseman. And the first pitch from Jarvis Evans is a ball outside. Evans at 2-0 on the season. Both of those wins coming in relief against Arkansas and Tennessee. And that's going to be ball two from Jarvis Evans. Dugas bats right, throws right. At 3.06, 13 homers, 39 RBI, number three in the nation and hit by pitch. 25 times. Swing and a miss, and it's 2-1. Dugas is also number four in the SEC with 60 runs scored. 472 on base percentage. 2-1 pitch fouled off the home plate umpire. Brandon Cooper got a piece of that foul ball and the count's two and two. Evans not afraid to come in right there in a hitter's count. Able to get inside on the Dugas. You mentioned Dugas, uh, he'll, he'll, he will hold his ground. He's not scared to get hit by the pitch, so very fine right there, but a good pitch, good quality pitch to get Evans back in this count. LSU is number one in the SEC, 113 HBP, popped up, foul territory, and Will David will not be able to reach it. Once again, Will David behind the plate. He has been behind the plate since the Tennessee series when 
number one catcher, Fernando Gonzalez, went down with an injury in his hand. Actually, an injury in his elbow. It's a UCL. LSU fans are very familiar with those UCL injuries. It's not torn. It's just a strain, but it's keeping him out of catching duties. Gonzalez again the DH tonight. 2-2 pitch. Again fouled back on the 90-mile-per-hour fastball, and the count remains 2-2. Two and two. Bulldogs defensively 980. They are closing in on matching the program record that was set in 2019. Also 980. 2-2 two -two pitch missed high. It's 3-2. Scott Strickland stressed the biggest key for Jarvis Evans tonight, as it is for all of the Georgia pitchers, but we're talking about tonight is limiting the free bases. You just cannot give this LSU team free base runners. 3-2 pitch, and they just did. Lead-off walk for Dugas. Scott Strickland in his 10th season as the Bulldogs head coach. He's closing in on 300 career victories. He's at 298 with the Bulldogs. He's well over 600 career victories, closing in. I believe on 650 overall in his coaching career. Here's Trey Morgan. Yeah, Scott Strickland is at 648 overall in his career. And Morgan goes after the first pitch and skies it to center field. Ben Anderson coming in and still coming in, has it for out number one. Morgan just missed that. And Gives us a chance to kind of see how the ball is going to react to the wind right now. Talking to Coach Strickland before the game, felt like the conditions kind of match Evans, who gets a lot of fly ball outs. This powerful LSU offense is really going to have to get into a couple to get him out of the yard. There's not going to be any cheapies, so the fly ball outs will play in Evans' favor for keeping the ball in the yard. Well, here's the aforementioned Dylan Cruz. And Cruz goes after the first pitch and fouls it back. Cruz out of Longwood, Florida, Lake Mary, junior outfielder, 438, 13 homers and 55 RBI. His 438 batting average, number one in the SEC, and it's number four in the nation. Evans takes a long time, comes to the plate with the 0-1, threw him that changeup, and it's 0-2. Is that the changeup or a breaking that ball? That was a changeup yep. right there. Good quality pitch. Wasn't really located well. Wasn't on the outside part of the plate. Kind of right down the middle. Took advantage of Cruz's aggressiveness right there. We'll see if Cruz makes an adjustment with two strikes. Sees it a little bit deeper. Here's the 0-2 from Evans. Hot shot over the third base umpire's head and foul ball. Jason Johnson working the third base bag tonight. Brandon Cooper behind the plate, Damian Beal at first base, and Scott Klein, your second base umpire. Back-to-back -back change ups. See if Evans tries to go in right here on Cruz. No balls, two strikes to Dylan Cruz. Fouled out of play again. The 56 game on base streak. Dates back to last season, all 52 games this year, and the last four of the 2022 season. Talking to Jay Johnson before the game, I said, can you remember the last time he didn't <laughs> reach base? He says, I cannot. We just know it was the fifth game from the end of last season. Here's the 0-2 pitch to Cruz, missed high. One and two. Oh, yanked that change up just a little bit inside, a dangerous pitch right there. I feel like they've really pitched that part of the plate a lot to Cruz. Got to give him something to look at on the outside part of the plate and then maybe come back to it. Cruz with the number one on base percentage in the conference, number two in the nation at 592 as Evans chases back Dugas at first base. And LSU is even less of a threat to steal bases than the Georgia Bulldogs. Well, it's just tough when you got that much pow power scatter scattered throughout your lineup. You just don't want to give a cheap out away on the bases. Dogs are 13th in the conference, and the Tigers are 14th. Count now two and two to Dylan Cruz, and you're exactly right. When you got guys that can rip it and rake it like the Tigers, why, <laughs> why waste outs? You're already in scoring position at first. 
You see the national ranks for Dylan Cruz. Got him. Dylan Cruz goes down swinging again, that changeup. That's just the 29th time that Dylan Cruz has struck out this season. Yeah, it's a really good changeup. This one he gets on top of it, has a little action down. You see David reaching for it right there. Cruz was able to foul that pitch off earlier in the at bat because it stayed up just a hair. It was that foul ball we saw down the third baseline, but right there getting a little bit more on top of it, gets the strikeout. Here's Tommy White with a big wide stance. Number one in the nation in RBI. Strike one to Tommy White. His 1.79 RBI, our number one in the country is 86 total RBI, or number two. It's the sixth highest single season RBI total in LSU history. And they probably still have a lot of baseball left. They're 40 and 12. Got three more games here to wrap up the regular season, the SEC tournament, and then the NCAA tournament. Evans, 1-1 one, one pitch. In there for a strike, and it's 1-2 and two to White. I think the big key for LSU is just get back to where they were. I mean, yeah. They were ranked number one in the nation for 12 consecutive weeks. Stubbed their toe the last couple of weekends against Auburn and Mississippi State. The one-two pitch from Evans in the air and out of play. I think the Mississippi State one in particular was the one that really, really still stings a little bit because they, they had wins. They could have swept that series. And they just didn't get the pitching done at the back end of uh, the last two games. Yeah, you almost like to take your licks here at this time rather than in the regionals. The two-strike approach there from White. Evans, 1-2 pitch. Outside, 2-2. Two and two. Tommy White batting 400. It's third best in the conference. So we've got the top three and four of the top five batting averages playing in the series tonight with Condon and Tate on the Georgia side, Cruz and White here on LSU side. Should be a fun series. Throw over, chases back Dugas. He's been there since drawing a leadoff walk. A lot of LSU fans here at Foley Field. Anybody who's been around SEC baseball, college baseball, knows that LSU travels well. They go to Omaha even when their team doesn't. <laughs> Here's the 2-2 pitch, missed high, three and two. Evans showing his freshman out there a little bit, just a couple of pitches here and there he doesn't quite commit to, just non-quality pitches. Had a couple of dugas, really bear down against Cruz, and there against White, just not really committing to that pitch. So little David maybe, maybe telling him that right there, just commit to it, trust it. I think uh, getting around that leadoff walk here could really boost his confidence. Well, LSU has the number one on base percentage in the SEC, number two in the country at 443. So they're going to make you work. 3 2, hot shot, foul ball. Knocked it past the third base coach, Josh Jordan. Again, a changeup. A little bit up, he gets it down, that's a swing and miss changeup. But here 3-2, trying to be competitive in the strike zone, leaves it up a hair, allows Tommy White to get a piece of it. And White is right there on top of the plate with three balls and two strikes. Again, hits it hard and foul. And that's the thing Jay Johnson said about Tommy White is, he's not just a great power hitter, he's just a great hitter. He's on everything. And yeah, that's, that's the key. He's on everything. And early in the season, getting accustomed to everything, he was swinging a lot of balls out of the zone. And that can work against you, and it did in that case because he was just chasing stuff out of the zone. But he started swinging at strikes in the zone, and he really took off as that foul ball gets David. You could see how deep White saw that pitch, almost hit it out of David's mitt, defending against that changeup. But 
Again, White already with a wide stance, less than two strikes. He gets even wider, opens the toe up to make his bat path a little bit shorter so he can sit there and wait. It's definitely unorthodox, Man, but... There's no doubt. Look how crouched low he is, spread out across that entire box. Front toe wide open and then just no stride. 3-2 in the air, right side. Thomas foul territory over near the fence. Has it, and the inning comes to a close. So the Tigers got the first man aboard, but can't move him. We'll head to the bottom half. Georgia batting for the first time. They're here. You brought all these players in your Buick? Yep, got three rows. So you. Where do I plug in? It's wireless. That's so you. What do I do with these? Careful, it's kind of busy. Oh, I got this with my superpowers. And a little help from your Buick. At the heart of every Buick SUV is you. Get this low mileage lease on this 2023 Buick Encore GX preferred for around $249 per month. See your Bayou Buick dealer. Adulting made easy. That's totally Target. And this is a real treat for us, just like it is you, to be watching. Paul Skeen's on the mound tonight for LSU. Best pitcher in the nation, leads all of D1 in strikeouts, whip, ERA, innings pitched, opponent batting average in the SEC, 10-plus strikeouts in 11 of his 13 starts, and he is the projected number two overall pick in the MLB draft right behind his teammate Dylan Cruz. And it's really incredible to see in person as well. He just doesn't even look like he's trying. The ball just kind of explodes out of his hands, almost like a video game, which velocity is already up there. So the ease with which he throws makes it look that much faster to these hitters. And for a real treat tonight, that Georgia does their homework. They're, they're known to jump a guy that's got really good numbers. So this lineup top to bottom, I, I still argue that the 2-3-4 of the Georgia lineup is, is one of the best combos in college baseball. So. Should be a fun and exciting game here today. Seven-time Collegiate Baseball National Player of the Week, three-time SEC Pitcher of the Week. His coach, Jay Johnson, compared him to Steven Strasburg or Lincecum or David Price yeah. in that vein. And, of course, history backs that up and tells you just how good those three guys were. So you take a look at the Georgia batting order. Eight right-handers, and here's the only left-hander. Ben Anderson. It's one and one. And this is one that, as a hitter against most pitchers, you see the ball up, see the ball up. This is a guy you got to get the ball down. It's just too hard to catch up to. One, one. 97 strike, and it's one and two. The big guy, Coach Kirby Smart, here in attendance, perhaps to check out Paul Skeens himself. He's the talk of the nation. It's not every day that the guy comes to town humming 100 miles per hour. <laughs> the season has been phenomenal. 2-2 pitch. Georgia coach. Everybody goes to the comparison, somebody they saw in person. Coach Scott Strickland compared him to Garrett Cole. Yeah, another good comparison. Uh, similar builds as well. It's just such an easy motion. The ball just jumps. Two balls, two strikes. Was that the slider? Ooh, like a changeup right a change there. Up? Just going yes, to his third change. best yep. right there. Probably not going to see the changeup against the righties. But a good job, a great lead off at bat here by Anderson, making him work. 3-2 pitch, got him, 98. First of what will probably be many strikeouts for Skeens tonight. Yeah, I remember going to LSU or UCLA, beg your pardon, as a coach and uh, going up against Garrett Cole and Coach Perno at the time. His approach against Garrett Cole offensively was basically he's going to strike you out. He's going to get a lot of strikeouts this game. Just don't let it be a three pitch strikeout. Work the count, get his pitch count up. Let's see if we can get to that bullpen and see if we can keep it close on the defensive side. I think that's the approach that you have to take against Skeens. Well, here's Charlie Condon. If Dylan Cruz is the SEC Player of the Year again, then Charlie Condon is the front runner for SEC Freshman of the Year. Any other year, Charlie Condon would likely be the front runner for Player of the Year, but certainly the front runner for Freshman of the Year in my book. At 4:15, 24 home runs, 
and 65 RBI. Got a piece of the catcher Malazzo and also the home plate umpire. That's about the third time the home plate umpire has gotten tagged by a foul <laughs> ball in this game. One ball, two strikes to Condon. Hot shot to Dugas on a couple of hops, throws him out for out number two. And that'll get Connor Tate to the plate for the first time tonight. Tate, the number four guy in that group of four of the top five hitters in the SEC. Connor's at 390. As you take a look at LSU, now they've struggled at times defensively. Got Malazzo behind the plate, Beloso at first, Dugas at second, Thompson short, White at third. Then you go Morgan Cruz and Joe Bear in the outfield. They committed four errors on Tuesday night in their 7-4 victory against McNeese State. And they're fielding 974, which is not bad, but it is 10th out of the 14 teams in the SEC. No balls and two strikes to Connor Tate. Really quick for Skeens here. Hot shot. Thompson, nice hop for him. Slings it across. Below so the stretch. Inning comes to a close as the dogs go one, two, three. Snack success made easy. That's totally Target. Has this happened to you? AT&T and Verizon rope you in with phone offers, then bind you to a three-year device contract. Break free with T-Mobile. Introducing Go 5G Plus, the first plan that always gives new and existing customers the same great device deals, and you're upgrade ready in two years versus three. Bring your phone to T-Mobile and get one of the latest 5G smartphones free. Hello? Yes, I'm free. And so are you. No, I'm not tied up at all. Surely this is too many rope jokes. Break free with Go 5G Plus at T-Mobile. Head coach Kirby Smart of the two-time defending national champion Georgia Bulldogs and his wife Mary Beth taking in the game tonight. Along with other members of the Smart family, LSU and Georgia scoreless as we head to the top of the second inning. Jarvis Evans got through the first four batters in the first inning, facing batter number five in the order. And that is Hayden Travinsky. And man, this kid's been on such a tear over the last month. Against Tennessee, it was not a start, but it was like a start because he came in after just two pitches. And that was his best performance so far in his collegiate career. Like a start, went five and a third, career high, seven strikeouts, gave up just three hits, one run, two walks, came in after Charlie Goldstein had to leave after two pitches. An impromptu relief appearance and pseudo start for Jarvis Evans. And that was really kind of his announcement that he was here. He'd started his one start, came earlier in the week against Kennesaw State, did well. But when he came out and did that against Tennessee, everybody knew that Jarvis Evans was going to be for real. Here's the 2-2 pitch to Kavinsky. Got him. Strikeout number two for Jarvis Evans. And again, that inside changeup. Now, I'm not sure if he's meaning to throw it there, but as a hitter, you see that ball bearing in on you. You know you got to get the barrel out. So you pull the trigger on it, and it, you're just trained to do so, and then all of a sudden it's not there. So a good job at mastering that pitch is if you leave it up, it can go a long way. Here's Cade Beloso, one of the three left-handers in the batting order for the Tigers, and that's strike one to him. Bulldog's going to put the shift on for Beloso and bring... Parks Harbor over from third base and have him play in shallow right field. Count quickly, 0-2 to Beloso. Graduate first baseman out of New Orleans, played at John Curtis. Wow, just missed there with a potential called third strike. He counts one and two, good eye by Beloso. Quality 0-2 as well from Evans. 1-2 pitch from Evans. Missed high, two and two. 
Yeah. Tennessee really struggled with his changeup. It's the great equalizer for him. No doubt. I, you know, they kept shaking their heads like, oh, yeah, I've seen it, I've seen it, but it's just so difficult. You see it right there, left on left, leaves it in again. I don't think that one intentionally left in, but just so hard for the hitters to not do what you're used to doing. And, you call it a Bugs Bunny change, It's right? a Bugs Bunny change up, it really is. That up in the zone, not even a quality location. And just well out in front. Now they gotta get a little finer with the second time around, they're gonna have eyes on it and they'll have a little bit better idea. Here's the shortstop. Thompson stands in there. Jordan Thompson out of California. Two sixty-five on the season for Thompson. Nine homers, forty-one RBI. Batting two fifty-two in conference play. Here's the two-zero pitch. Here's a fastball, eighty-seven. So when you get the big difference, you see that's eighty-seven compared to the seventy-nine changeup. He can really make that fastball look a lot harder than it actually is. That ball is hit foul down the left field line. I think the deception actually comes from the short arm that he has. It's not typical to see a lefty throw almost like a catcher. He played quarterback in high school. Yep. I think that short arm action kind of came from that. So he hides the ball well. Everything looks the same. And really seven to 10 miles an hour off on the chase isn't that large of a, of a difference in timing. It's, it's mostly the action and the location of it. 2-2 pitch from Evans, missed three and two. He was indeed a high school quarterback at one of the top programs in the state of Georgia, Buford High School, through his junior season. He was offered by D1 programs, had a couple of D1 offers, Maryland among them. 3-2 pitch, and there's a walk. Second walk issued by Jarvis Evans. And, and, and that's the piece of the puzzle, that breaking ball right there that's really going to be a difference maker for him. I think that's something in the offseason he really needs to work on to make him a complete pitcher. There's a couple of breaking balls there, not able to make the adjustment and get, get the break on it, get his fingers to the front of that baseball that kind of hangs up for ball three and ball four. Finished his high school career at Georgia Premier Academy down in Statesboro when he decided after his junior year of high school football that he was going to go exclusively baseball. Here's Joe Bear. Tigers with their second base runner of the night. Pitch clock violation, it looked like there. Yep, ball one. So Joe Bear already ahead of the count. Runners going. Here comes the throw down by David. Can't hold on to it. That'll be a stolen base for that, Thompson. I think that caught David a little off guard. A little bit of inexperience there with the lefty in the box. You can't count on, on listening to your infielder say runner. You got to get to where you can see that base runner take off, and it looked like Will David was caught a little bit off guard. Wow, there. huge jump for Thompson. I mean, he was two-thirds of the way to the third base bag by the time the ball was on its way, and Sean Kenny, the Georgia pitching coach, is going to come out and talk to him. Looked like the, uh, you know, the, sh the, the pitch clock violation might have rattled him a little bit. Yeah, possibly. I think, you know, Obviously doing a lot of thinking. He, he shook off, essentially wiped to that breaking ball he missed with for ball four. And then with lefties, obviously you got to respect the first move. You got to respect the pickoff when you're at first, but once you get to second, a lot of times it's easy to steal third bases. They kind of relax a little bit. Evans did that there, just rolled right through it. And Thompson was able to pick up the easy bag. Prior to reaching base, here in the second inning, Jordan Thompson was just four for six stolen bases this season. Yep. He's gone back to back here to reach third base. Yeah, really not much difference with him there at third, as Evans doesn't typically throw balls in the dirt. But more importantly, the division of mindset that creates for the pitcher. Just one extra thing this young freshman Evans has to think about. Strike one to Joe Bear. Three balls and a strike to the junior out of Slidell, Louisiana, 298. Eight homers, 32 RBI. 3-1 pitch, oh my goodness, got all of that one. And LSU has a 2-0 lead as he pounds it over the scoreboard in right field.
Home run number nine for Braden Jobert, RBI 33 and 34. Yeah, great job by Joe Bear there, taking advantage. Knew he was going to get a fastball in that situation. Evans fell behind, had the pitch clock violation and a couple of bad quality pitches, fell behind 3-0. Knows he's going to get the fastball. Not a bad one, but in those fastball counts, these guys are going get, to get that bat head out and around as they have done all year. Joe Bear puts him on top there by two. 105th home run that the Tigers have hit this season. Fourth highest total in the SEC. Here's the number nine hitter, Alex Malazzo. Malazzo, junior catcher out of Zachary, Louisiana. Lost the grip on the changeup right there and threw it to the backstop. Yeah, reeling a little bit. Like and actually looked like it was another curveball there, just kind of slipped out of his hands. Just doesn't quite have feel for that pitch. And it's tough navigating the lineup with just two as a starter. Malazzo making his 19th start tonight. Socks that one to center. Ben Anderson has it for the final out of the inning. But the Tigers jump on top first on the two-run homer by Joe Bear. We'll head to the bottom of half with LSU on top, 2-0. Well, Paul Skeens has been staked to a 2-0 lead. As you take a look at the Georgia Bulldogs season summary, they're 28-24 overall, 10-17 in the SEC, currently in 12th place. Started out 1-9. They've won 9 of 17 games in the conference since. With series wins here at Foley Field against Kentucky, Tennessee, and Arkansas. The sweep against Arkansas was their first top five sweep since 1993. Yeah, I really thought they had things going. And then that road trip to Columbia, Missouri kind of burst their bubble just a little bit. I thought they were in position where if they could win that series, it was going to come down to winning this series for them to guarantee a spot, uh, regional berth. There's Parks Harbor leading off the inning for Georgia. There's a strike from Skeens. It's one and two. Harbor hit his 17th home run on Sunday in that 5-4 loss at Missouri. Here's the 1-2 pitch, swung on and miss, and Harbor goes down swinging. Strikeout number two for Skeens. Yeah, just a nice easy slider right there. I think the tough part with Skeens is it, it barely looks like he's trying. The ball just kind of explodes. Yeah. Here's Fernando Gonzalez. You're exactly right. You would think 98, you'd be grunting. There'd be max <laughs> effort. You'd be straining. The veins in your neck would be bulging. It just comes like right out. Yeah, when it's that easy, I mean, that easy at 92, 94, it sneaks up on you, but in the upper 90s, it's, it's that much harder. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Missed low and away, 3-0 to Gonzalez. Last start for Skeens, a seven-inning complete game win. 13 strikeouts in their 12-1 run rule victory against Mississippi State. In fact, LSU has 14 run rule wins this year. They're 14-1 in run rule games. Gonzalez sends that one in the air towards the gap in right field. It's going to be run down by Joe Bear for out number two. And you can just see the difference in that hitter's count. Joe Bear able to get the head out on a fastball and pull on pull side right there. Gonzalez's power alley's mostly to right field, but he got beat a little bit deep right there. Gave it a good run, new fastball was coming, cheated to it. Still just a little bit late. Here's Will David. The former St. Pius Golden Lion by way of Samford. He's played second base and third base primarily for the Bulldogs this season. Ended up being the number one catcher when Gonzalez got hurt, Corey Collins got hurt. Ball is stroked well to center field, but Cruz is able to retreat and run it down right there at the warning track for out number three. Dogs are six up, six down so far. LSU on top, two nothing as we head to the third. 
Here's a look at the top draft eligible college prospects in the 2023 MLB draft, according to Kylie McDaniel of ESPN. And you'll see Dylan Cruz, who's due up to bat third here in this inning, number one on that list. And Paul Skeens, who has set the Bulldogs down six in a row to start the game, is number two. Chase Dolander, we saw him in here a couple of weekends ago for Tennessee. Dogs were able to actually beat Chase Dolander. He's the fourth-rated college baseball prospect coming up in the MLB draft. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to go one, two, three, four. That's just the college prospects. They'll have high school prospects going in the mix as well. That's an 0-1 pitch from Evans, and it's 1-1. One one. Dugas walked his first time up. Missed inside, 2-1 and one to Dugas. Hit his 13th home run six nights ago in that 12-1 seven-inning win against Mississippi State. Finished four for four that night. Had a triple, a couple of singles, hit by pitch, four runs scored. His on-base streak is now at 49 consecutive games. After reaching on that leadoff walk back in the first inning. Any other program in the country, that would be the headliner. 49 consecutive games. He's just kind of a footnote <laughs> to Dylan Cruz at 56 consecutive games. 3-2 pitch. In the air, right field, Justin Thomas coming in for out number one. Thomas out in right field tonight. Cole Wagner nursing a back injury, unable to go for the Bulldogs. In fact, I don't think he's even on the weekend roster, is he? No, I don't believe yeah, he Cole is. Cole Wagner is down for the entire weekend. Wagner, who's been the Bulldogs' right fielder and DH this season. Trey Morgan takes a big cut, comes out of his shoes almost. Morgan out of Brother Martin in New Orleans. I think they got to table that breaking ball. It just, it's not quality right now, and I think it's throwing him off. Threw one in an 0-1 count uh, to Dugas as well, and then followed that up with two consecutive balls. It is again. Morgan has been the toughest guy to strike out in this LSU order this season. Strikes out only once every nine AB. Here's 2-1, rocket shot. Off the screen in front of the Bulldogs dugout. Only 21 strikeouts for Trey Morgan in 192 at-bats this season. Two balls, two strikes. Hit on the ground. It's going to get into right field for a base hit. Hit number two for LSU. Yeah, I like his approach a lot. He's choked up from the beginning of the at-bat. You see there, chokes up just a little extra with two strikes. Just does whatever he can to put the ball in play. Uses that right side on the changeup. Just a little bit up again from Evans, but Morgan stays through the zone and finds a hole there on the right side of the infield. And here's Dylan Cruz, the 2022 SEC Co-Player of the Year. Probably will not be a co attached to that award this year. High pitch that David has to knock down. Morgan was unable to advance. Yeah, another attempt at the breaking ball, just not finishing it. I think at, at some point, you know, Evans getting up there in pitch count here, just two and a third inning so far at 62 pitches. And I feel like you're you're wasting a few with that breaking ball. Just stick with the fastball, change up what works, and try and get as as far along as you can. 1-0 pitch from Evans. That's in there for a strike. One and one. I think the LSU lineup has eliminated that pitch. I don't think they're even going to defend against it since he hasn't proven he can throw it for a strike. Cruz, the first LSU player to win SEC Player of the Year honor since Rafe Rimes back in 2012. That was a heck of a year he had. <laughs> Rafe could play some ball. He was hitting close to 500 late in the season. Saw Trey Morgan with 15 stolen bases in 2021. 
That was before Jay Johnson got there. Ground ball. Let's see. Marillo's going to charge and throw. High throw and safe. Cruz beats it out. Base hit. On base streak, 57 games. No, and a good effort there by Marillo. Running away from first. Just didn't get enough on the throw. But you got to use your turf a little bit right there. Get rid of it. And maybe the one hop is a little bit better than airing it out. That would have given Condon a, a bit more of a chance to stretch out, possibly beat Cruz to the bag. Jarvis Evans getting in a sticky situation here with Tommy White coming to the plate. Transferred from NC State where he was making Sports Center top 10 highlights seemed like every night last year as a freshman. Average has dipped down to 398. Still at 18 home runs, leads the team. And he hits this one to deep right field. Thomas going back there near the wall, makes it. Tagging Morgan, heads to third. Runners at the corners for LSU, now two down. Looked like he hit that off the end of the bat. Yeah, it didn't quite get all of it, but that ball is kind of carrying that way. Even though the wind's blowing in, it seems to be pushing the ball out to right just a hair. Thomas did a good job getting to that, showing off the arm. Back into the infield, throwing off his back foot, was able to cover the distance to the plant. And I didn't think there was any way that ball was going to get out of here, and then I started to reconsider as it kept traveling. <laughs> Big, strong kid. Here's Travinsky with runners at the corners, two out. Evans fires over the first, chasing back Cruz. Yeah, again, Cruz, good speed, just four for four and stolen bases on the year, but mostly because LSU doesn't need them. Travinsky here in a spot. You get a two-out RBI and give LSU a whole heck of a lot of momentum. Well, when you got White, Travinsky, Beloso batting the three guys behind you, you don't want to be running into the outs, right? Not much of a reason to take a risk in my book. Struck out his first time up. One of three strikeouts for Jarvis Evans tonight. Strike one to Travinsky. Last four games, Travinsky 7 for 10 for three home runs, a double, six RBI. Went three for five in the Mississippi State Series with a homer and a couple of RBI. Made a couple of starts at catcher. He's DH tonight. Just really cannot locate that breaking ball. And he just keeps missing in the same spot with it as well. Again, trying to protect it and throw it in good counts. 0-1's a good count to try and get a feel for it, but at some point you just got to say, I don't have it today. Count now one and two to Travinsky. Evans, this will be his 70th pitch as he tries to get through three innings of work here. Still no activity in the Georgia bullpen. One-two, runner going from first, and Cruz will head back. That ball is going to be out of play. I mean, LSU just does such a tremendous job at the plate, spoiling so many pitches. Look how they have so quickly escalated Evans' pitch count here. They've done a good job. Again, Evans trying to find that breaking ball. I think it's thrown him off. It's taken him another pitch to get back in the zone, back to the quality. And that's how they uh, contributed as well. But you're right. They just stay in the zone so long and spoil so many pitches. Another. Count remains one and two to Travinsky. He had to leave Sunday's game due to heat exhaustion. One, two. Ball goes to the backstop. Here comes Morgan. David races home, applies the tag at the plate for the final out of the inning. Pitch sailed over David's head, but Georgia caught a break when the ball ricocheted back to him and gave him a chance to tag out Morgan for the final out. He was able to get there in plenty of time.
bottom of the third. LSU on top, 2 nothing. Skeens has struck out two through two. Joe Bear, two-run home run. Evans, very fortunate to have given up just the two runs to this point after the Bulldogs got the out on the wild pitch at the plate to end the top half of the inning. And now Murillo leads off the third for the Dogs. Ball one from Skeens. Murillo grew up out there where Jay Johnson, uh, John, Johnson, pardon me, you know, kind of got his career started out in San Diego as an assistant coach, then a head coach at Nevada, Arizona, before joining the LSU Tigers after the retirement of Paul Maneri in June of 2021. Led the Wildcats to the Pac-12 championship and the College World Series. In 2021, Murillo taps that one foul down the third baseline. And that's where Tommy White is playing, one of the big reasons why he transferred to LSU. He was a DH primarily as a freshman with the Wolfpack. Wanted to play third base. His hitting has been as good as advertised. Coach Johnson says his defense is getting better. <laughs> Here's the 2-2. Uh, he's accounting for more runs than he's giving up on the defensive side of the ball, so call that a victory. He is dangerous in the middle of that order. Three balls and two strikes to Murillo. And Murillo socks that to left field. Morgan makes a sliding catch for a Sports Center top 10 nominee. Great play there by Morgan. Good jump on the ball. That ball had a little bit of sink to it. You can see it kind of sinking and hooking. He does a good job at getting his head down to eye level as he makes that, that first diving catch right there. Risky play. That one gets under his glove. Good adjustment there. Kind of turning the thumb underneath. That ball gets by his glove. Morello's got some good wheels. I think it's a guaranteed triple, if not more. Here's Mason LaPlante, the number eight hitter for Georgia, and there's a strike one to LaPlante. LaPlante, the graduate second baseman for the Bulldogs, got a six-game hitting streak going. Here's the 0-1 pitch outside. It's 1-1. One and one. Yeah, i got to give a lot of credit to this Georgia offense. They don't have any base runners to this point in the game, but they've squared some balls up off of Skeens pretty well. LaPlante at 284, four homers and 25 RBI. Has 15 multi-hit games with the Bulldogs. Had 25 with the Yale Bulldogs before he transferred to Georgia. Here's the one-two pitch. Got him. Strikeout number three for Paul Skeens. Yeah, that was the old uh, Bayou pitch right there. 98, free and easy LaPlante. Barely got the swing off before it was in Lazo's glove there. Well, here's Justin Thomas making just his eighth start of the season. Three for 26 on the year. <laughs> First pitch he sees a breaking <laughs> ball. He's all geared up for a high 90s fastball. Boy. You see the 115 average, small sample size for the freshman out of Savannah, Georgia in Benedictine Military Academy. Played for the cadets. Kind of an all-season sports star with the school down on the coast. Star high school football player. Here's the 1-1 pitch. The 2-0 pitch. What do we got? It's now one and two. Okay, the count's one and two now. One ball, two strikes. Nineteen years old, had a two-run single in the Bulldogs' 10-9 win against Kennesaw State a couple of weeks ago. Called strike three. Paul Skeens has struck out four of the first nine batters that he's faced. Nine up, nine down for the Bulldogs as we head to the fourth.
Snack success made easy. That's totally Target. Hello? We're just waking up. He was born on July 2nd. Yes, just like my dad. He's got my nose. And he's nine pounds and six ounces. Honey, nine pounds and six hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. That never happens. Look, she's saying hi to your big brother. Technology changes, but why we use it stays the same. Whatever's next, Cox will be there. Cox, bringing us closer. Jarvis Evans back out there to start the fourth inning. Here's the pitch comparable so far. This is their season numbers. And then the bottom row tonight's pitch count where Evans has thrown twice as many pitches as Skeens to get through the first three innings. Yeah, I got to give a lot of credit, as you mentioned, to this LSU offense spoiling a lot of pitches from Evans. But Evans also not looking quite as sharp as he was against Tennessee. And I think we're talking about Tennessee, he was kind of thrust into that mix, didn't have time to think about it, whereas had all week to stew over this start. Travinsky leading off the inning. He was batting when Morgan was thrown out trying to score on the wild pitch. And Travinsky sends it up the shoot over on the right side. Condon called off by LaPlante, who catches it against his body for out number one. Tough ball right there, kind of hitting the no man's land. I thought Condon had a pretty good beat on it. The plant coming in late there. You can see that ball coming back into the field of play. Really traps it against his chest, does the plant. Make sure the ball doesn't hit the turf. As Evans needed that quick out right there. One down, here's Beloso. Struck out swinging his first time up. And you were making the comparison that Jarvis Evans was thrust into that pseudo start against Tennessee. That's a hot shot foul down into the right field corner. And then, all due respect to Tennessee, these LSU hitters are better. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they're making <laughs> Jarvis Evans work for everything that he gets. They really are. It's a, it's a great offense top to bottom. I think you look at that first inning and, and really had to grind on, on Cruz, got the big strikeout against him and, and White, and then I got a breather there. You think it would be a breather, and then Joe Bear jumps him for the big home run. That breaking ball just not there. If he had that, it, it would definitely help. But again, you're three innings deep, three and a third innings deep. It just hasn't been there. And not only that, it looks like it's getting worse. So I think you table it. I mean, is it realistic? 2 1, and that's a hot shot into right field for a base hit. Hit number four for the Tigers. Is it realistic to believe that as badly as he is missed with that breaking ball that it would suddenly come to him if he keeps trying? It is in some cases, but it's getting worse. I think you've tried enough to get it in the mix. I think he's done a good job at throwing it in some counts where he's protected, some 0-1 counts, 1-0 counts, and things of that nature. But it's not that it's so bad when he throws it. It's that the pitch that follows it is also not a quality pitch. It throws him off a little bit. You could see him on the, a couple of the bad breaks. Uh, the, the ball that, that ended last inning, he kind of put his head down in disgust and trying to get that pitch across. Forgot to cover home plate. Luckily, the ball carried him back for David. He was able to make a play, but Evans hadn't left him out. Jordan Thompson, 0-1 pitch to him is ball one, one and one. Thompson walked, stole two bases, scored on the two-run homer by Joe Bear for the only runs of the game back in the second inning. Yeah, there again, an 0-1 break ball, a little bit better that time. Change up, strike one, two. So this is probably the last inning for Jarvis Evans. I know the Bulldogs would love to see him get through it cleanly. I think that's Nolan Crisp warming up in the bullpen for the Dogs. One, two pitch. If he can get through it with some good quality pitches, because I'm not sure if those last two pitches might have been that curveball, and he may have found it. Oh, the last one. me wrong. But yeah, I think the last two might have been. It was, they were right there at 76-77. It's tough to tell the difference between that and his breaking ball from this vantage point. Here's the one-two pitch. Now two and two. But if he can get through it, he's shown the ability. We mentioned that 
start he was thrust into, the non-start start against Tennessee. He had thrown 53 pitches against Kennesaw State just three days prior to that. So he does have the, the stamina to maybe stretch out a little bit more than you would think. Two balls, two strikes to Jordan Thompson. That's ball three, three and two. Thompson, nine home runs on the year, the last coming a couple of weeks ago. Three-run homer in their 14-4-7 inning win against Northwestern State. Here's the 3-2, Jarvis Evans hit foul again. And the pitch count has risen to 85. Yeah, yeah very, very well could be his last. I'd like to see him kind of fall in love with the off-speed stuff. Hasn't really changed the eyes at all, this at bat with a fastball. 3-2 pitch, walked him. And that might have been his final batter. We'll see if Scott Strickland makes a move right here. Not yet. No. And here is Braden Joe Bear. This is what he did his last time up back in the second. Yeah, and again, just doing, doing the right thing when you get into that hitter's count. Not really cheating, just moving your contact point up in the zone, anticipating fastball. That pitch was away, and he was able to get the head out and pull it for a home run. Check swing foul back. It would make sense, even though Joe Bear clubbed that home run over the scoreboard his last time up, that you stick with Jarvis Evans here on the left and left matchup, since it looks like Crisp is the next guy in. If he had his breaking ball, it would make a lot of sense that without that breaking ball, it's almost kind of the same, just a different look. 0-1, popped up out of play. It's 0-2 now to Joe Bear. Pitched him in reverse there, went change up fastball. But if he had the breaking ball, it'd be prime right now to start it on the outside part and have it going away from the hitter. But I think you got to table it, maybe stick with the change up here down in the zone, see if you can get him out in front. O2 pitch. That was fastball, fouled out of play. Last five games, Joe Bear batting 438. Couple of homers and 10 RBI. He's hit another home run tonight. So three homers, 12 RBI in his last six games. Bad. Got the breaking ball across right there. And that was the pitch you were talking about two pitches prior, right? Yeah, and a good take there by Joe Bear. But again, I think you see spin if you're LSU. You just tell yourself not to swing as he has not commanded it for a strike yet. 1-2 pitch. Fouled it off. I think it was another breaking ball right there. So he is finding it. It's just a good battle here, this LSU offense. Good plate discipline, seeing the ball deep, waiting him out, waiting for that mistake. 16 batters have forced him to throw 91 pitches. Got him right there. Big pitch by Evans to strike out Joe Bear, who had taken him deep the last time he faced him, and that'll be the last batter that Jarvis Evans faces. Looked like he just kind of left that change up, up in the zone. Got away with it. Yeah. Not a quality pitch at all. And got to give a lot of credit to Evans for battling right there in his first start. Leaves the mound just down by two. Yeah, that pitch was so high. Just too tantalizing yeah. for Joe Bear. <laughs> he was seeing stars in his eyes, right? That's right. He was looking at another bomb. Good job by Evans. Nolan Chris coming in with LSU leading 2-0. Nolan Crisp on for his 15th appearance of the season and his 11th out of the bullpen, senior. Nolan Crisp among those who graduated over the weekend. One and two on the season, ERA plus nine. 18 strikeouts, 12 walks, and 21 plus innings. Yeah, hadn't been the year that Crisp was hoping to have, but he does have a lot of experience in SEC ball games. It's a tight situation against a good opponent. 
focused here on just getting the last out of this inning and preserving a pretty good start by Evans. Obviously, LSU gave him fits, didn't quite have that extra pitch he needed for the swing and miss as often as he would have liked to have it. But he battled well, got to give him a lot of credit. Just the one mistake, the home run to Joe Bear. And so far, just the two runs given up has kept his team in this ball game. Unfortunately, took him 92 pitches to navigate three and two thirds. Uh, but again, a lot of credit to LSU's offense. They spoiled a lot of good ones. So he comes in with runners at first and second, two down. Here's Malazzo, the number nine hitter. Hot shot caught by Condon. One pitch, one out. Threat ended by Nolan Crisp. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth with LSU on top, 2-0. Heading to the bottom of the fourth here in Athens and a 2-0 lead for LSU. Jarvis Evans gave the Bulldogs 92 pitches. Paul Skeens, nine up, nine down for him through the Georgia order. And Braden Joe Bear has provided the only runs tonight on a two-run homer in the second. Matt Stewart along with Jason Jacobs as Skeens back out there. Skeens has struck out four of the first nine batters that he's faced. He has double-digit strikeouts in 11 of his 13 starts this season. The two that he didn't, he had nine against Alabama, which was a win, and he had eight against South Carolina. He pitched only three innings that <laughs> night because of rain. That's wild. He struck out eight out of nine guys. Here's the 1-1 pitch. To ben Anderson, he was the first of the four strikeout victims for Skeens back in the first. Foul back. That's Dogs it. still looking for their first hit, first base runner. Yeah, it's interesting just watching Ben Anderson he's so used to being in the same part of the box. He's got a little extra room on the back end. I would think you would use it, but electing to stay there right in the middle Get that extra eight inches to watch the ball. I know it doesn't seem like much, but I think I'd be in the back of the box. <laughs> Here's the 2-2 from Skeens. Fouled back to Ben Anderson, the 2022 SEC Baseball Scholar Athlete of the Year. Closing in on the end of his college baseball career. Been going at it now for six years, 24 years old. Going to med school. 2-2 pitch, called strike three. Five strikeouts, ten batters for Skeens. And going with the backdoor slider right there. Well executed, well located. So not, a, not only does he throw with velocity, but able to locate and get some break on that arm side part with the, with the breaking ball. It's back-to-back -back strikeouts looking for Skeens. He also leads the SEC in that category as well. 46 strikeouts looking this season. 157 total. So over 100 swinging. 1-0 pitch to Condon. Got a piece of it. It's 1-1. One one. Charlie Condon average at 412. The 24 home runs for Condon. Number two in the SEC. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Up the chute, right side, foul territory. Beloso over near the fence, runs out of territory. Number three in the nation in slugging percentage. Leads the SEC coming into tonight at 8.50. It's 24 home runs. SEC freshman record. Broke it over the weekend at Missouri with a couple of bombs. 1-2 pitch. Hit on the ground to Dugas. Two outs. Second time that Condon is grounded out to the second baseman. Skeen's doing a, a great job of getting ahead of Condon. Condon just a little bit tardy on that fastball. Second time through. I think, you know, you don't want to have to guess against Skeens because he has such good command of his breaking ball as well. But at some point, you got to sell out a little bit so you don't foul that fastball off when you get it. Connor Tate 
Ball one to Tate. Came in tied with Charlie Condon. 80 total hits to lead the SEC. There's a called strike, and it's one and one. Tommy White leads the SEC in hits per game. Tate and Condon are tied for the overall total hits leading the SEC. 1-1. One, one. That missed, and it's 2-1 to Connor Tate. I think this is the perfect situation right here to maybe cheat a little bit on the fastball. Went back-to-back -back breaking balls for balls. You think he's going to come back with a fastball here. Good time to cheat. 2-1 outside, 3-1. Good discipline right there to lay off of it. It looked like he thought it was a fastball to start. That late break, now you got three breaking balls in a row. So, again, we'll see if Tate cheats a little out front here. Ball four, first base runner for the Bulldogs. Good at bat right there, and good discipline from Tate. Both of those sliders he was able to lay off were not bad pitches. He was able to recognize them and keep those hands back. Skeens does not do that much. That is just the 15th walk that he surrendered in over 80 innings of work. 1.6 walks per nine innings. It's Parks Harbor. First scoring opportunity for Georgia tonight. <laughs> first base runner. <laughs> Harbor struck out swinging his first time up. One of the five strikeout victims for Skeen so far tonight. Big cut, misses the fastball, 21. Harbor hit his 17th home run of the season on Sunday in that 5-4 loss at Missouri. At the time, gave Georgia a 4-1 lead. It was also his 33rd career home run. And much like the Blues for LSU against Mississippi State in their bullpen, Georgia had leads on Saturday, Sunday against Missouri and couldn't get it done. Got walked off on Sunday. And for the Bulldogs... That was their sixth loss in the final inning this season. 2-2 two -two pitch. Outside, 3-2. and two. Tate down at first. Two down in the inning. He'll be off and going with the pitch. There he goes. 3-2. Got him. Harbor strikes out for the second time. Six strikeouts out of the 12 outs recorded by Paul Skeens. Six strikeouts for the nation's strikeout leader. LSU still on top, 2-0 as we head to the fifth. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a look at the NCAA tournament projected national seeds. D1 baseball in their latest release. LSU projected as the Number four seed in the country, Wake Forest at number one, LSU is the four seed, would mean if they get to the Supers, if Chalk plays out, then Miami would be the team that they would face in the Super Regionals. That would be fun. LSU and their season resume. 40 and 12, the best 52 game record for the Tigers since 2015 when they were 44 and eight. Their RPI is four, their strength of schedule is 15, 15 and 10 against the RPI top 50. Talking to Coach Jay Johnson before the game, the realistic part of the picture for LSU is despite the fact they lost to Auburn and Mississippi State in back-to-back -back series as Dugas is leading off the inning for the Tigers here in the fifth, is, you know, everything's still in play for them. That's going to be a foul ball. That looked fair. That last bounce that it took was in fair territory. And I think Harbor thought it was close enough to try and make a play on it. Obviously, a play being a throw to first. Might be a break for Georgia because I don't think he throws out Dugas there. I don't there. think he does either. And, well, he definitely doesn't. He, he 
Bumblebee uh, every exchange. bobble, even yeah. if he doesn't bobble it, I, I yeah, don't know I that he throws him out. Cleanly, he doesn't get it on the swing and bunt there, but home plate umpire Brandon Cooper right on it there as it's his call on the home plate side of third base. It then becomes a third base umpire Jason Johnson's call once it passes third base. Dugas is 0 for 1 in the game, walked in the first, flew out in the third. 1-2 pitch from Crisp, again hit. That is a fair ball. Throw by Harbor, makes it look easy. Now, I don't know if he it. said anything to the <laughs> LSU bench, but he certainly looked at the dugout as he after he made that play. He got a little practice there on the previous pitch, so that one hit a little bit harder. Clean exchange right there and a good strong throw across. And here's Trey Morgan. Morgan one for two. Flew out in the first, single in the third. Thrown out at the plate, trying to score on a wild pitch. That was kind of a tough luck play for Trey Morgan right there. He had every right to be going on that wild pitch. The Bulldogs got a fortuitous bounce off the backstop right to Will Davis. Somebody tightened that net back there <laughs> right before the game because it <laughs> springed right off. David able to make the good athletic play. Morgan strikes out. Morgan seems a little bit surprised by that. Two down in the inning. Well, looked like he tried to check his swing, but kind of gave up on checking it. I definitely think that was an offer there. And Brandon Cooper taking that call all on his own, not checking down to third base. And Crisp so far looks pretty good. Dylan Cruz. Breaking ball from Crisp for strike one. Crisp has been that. As crisp as he has been all season. On the infield, Marillo, nice easy hop. High throw, pulls the Condon off the bag and he's gonna be safe. And Crisp has the ball and David wants him to go tag him. No, Condon had the ball. Condon. David was wanted him to tag him, thought that uh, Cruz maybe, had turned to second. Maybe Cruz didn't touch the bag. He gets it right yeah, there. Yeah, he got the bag right there. Yep. Good athletic move by Cruz right there. Morello just. Or was it, you know, see, his body is kind of leaning. Now he's safe. Now he never did commit to no. second base or like even turn in that direction. So I think you're right. David thought maybe that he had totally missed the bag on that. And Marilla's done that a couple of times this year. A seemingly easy, easy bounce, but just kind of looks like he fumbles the exchange a little bit, doesn't quite have a grip on the ball, and then will sail it a little bit high across the diamond. Of course, Crisp has to do a little extra work here to get out of this inning. That's just the 36th error that the Bulldogs have committed this season. Puts Cruz aboard for White. The count is 1-0. Oh. Bounces away from David. Cruz takes second on the wild pitch. Took a funny carom right there. David looked like he was in good position, but might have hit a, a foot mark in the left-handed batter's box and kicked way to the left side. They're going to walk it. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and put him on. That's the 11th intentional walk for the Georgia staff this season, second most in the conference. So first and second now for LSU after Crisp had gotten Duga and Morgan to start the inning. Here's Travinsky. Ball one to Travinsky, who is 0 for 2, struck out in the second, popped up in the fourth. Pick move. Cruz is back in there easily. LaPlante trying to sneak in the back door. Four nineteen for Travinsky, making his 10th start of the season here tonight. Little number on the infield. The plant scoops it up and throws out Travinsky at first for the final out. 
as the Tigers strand two more. They've left on six in this game. We're halfway through. LSU on top, 2-0. Paul Skeens with six more strikeouts tonight as he approaches 160 for the season. Done it with the fastball and the breaking ball. Got Harbor twice on good sliders. You can see Harbor very frustrated there walking away, shaking his head on a 3-2 breaking ball out of the zone, chasing ball four. But Skeens has been just absolutely phenomenal tonight. And he has now moved into the top five in the single season strikeout total in LSU's gloried history with Ben McDonald at the top. Who else, right? <laughs> 202 right. for Big Ben in 1989. Anthony Renato, 159. Doug Thompson, Paul Skeens now number four on the list. And Kurt Ainsworth had 156 back in 1999. Some major leaguers on that list. Paul Skeens will sooner than later be one of them. Gonzalez leading off the fifth for the Bulldogs. They've had one base runner in this game, a walk by Skeens to Connor Tate with two out in the fourth. Two and oh. David and Marillo also do up for Georgia here in the inning. If indeed Skeens, or if he is or he isn't, even if he's not the number two pick in the MLB draft, how soon, do, you know, he's a first rounder, no doubt, and a high first rounder, how soon do you think before he's in the majors? Well, his stuff plays for sure. I think he would have to develop a third pitch. I know he's got that changeup, hasn't really needed it at this level, so it'd be interesting to see. To be a starter. To be a starter, yeah. I think even to protect a little bit and get the left-handed batter out, you gotta have something moving away from that left-handed batter. Although he does backdoor to the, the slider pretty well. So, I mean, I, I can't think of much more you'd need. There's so much talent at that big league level right now, just some refinement. But could you see him starting at double A, which is usually where the big time prospects, that's a, that's a good landing spot. Can you go right from college to double A? I think talent wise and, and ability wise, absolutely. It would just all depend on the organization sure. he ends up with and, and their plans for him. Some guys like to protect. They're big time guys, uh, especially in that draft year. So, Gonzalez grounds out to Duga to start the, or Dugas. I keep calling him Duga, pardon <laughs> me, Dugas. But they, yeah, there's no doubt in the stuff. I mean, it's electric and it just looks so easy. Remember the star at Alabama was Duga. Yeah, that's oh. right. Yeah. Gavin Dugas. It's Will David with one down here in the fifth. That ball is hit pretty well to left center field. Back to the wall, and it's gone. First hit of the game for Georgia. Travels over the wall in left center field. Will David has cut the LSU lead in half. It's this Georgia offense, a little bit of life. They hit a couple of balls hard off of Skeens, but he was really sell settling in. Starting to rack up the strikeouts and the easy ground balls, and then a hang and breaking ball right there. Stays up and arm side. David does a good job of getting enough of it. Wind blowing in, so it wasn't a wind aided home run by any stretch of the imagination, but does enough to get enough of that ball and get it out of the yard. Here's Marillo. Home run number six for David and RBI number 24. 0 1 pitch. Marillo looks to lay down a bunt after the home run. And taps it foul. Not a bad idea. Yeah, the like count's 0-2. Like the move right there by Marillo, just trying to keep things going. Skeens has gotten really comfortable out of the windup, only having to face one batter from the stretch to this point. Home run for David is his 12th career. 
So he had six in his entire career at Samford and six this year with the Bulldogs. 1-2 pitch to Murillo. Tap foul. Murillo lined out to left field, was robbed by Trey Morgan. Back in the third, went two for 12 in the Missouri series. First game of the week for Georgia, they were set to play Western Carolina on Tuesday night. We got started, got into the first, and then the rain and lightning came and ended the game. 2-2, two -two, hit foul. Bulldogs 10 and 11 against top 25 teams this year. 12 and 17 against the RPI top 50. LSU falls into both of those categories. 2-2 pitch from Skeens. That ball is hit to left field towards the gap. Morgan gives chase. It's going to one-hop the wall. Murillo slides into second. Back-to-back -back extra base hits for George and the Bulldogs in business here in the fifth. They had a great at-bat there by Murillo, doing everything he can to fight some pitches off and stay alive. Got that a little bit off the end of the bat. The second hard hit ball he's had off of Skeens as he lined out. Great play by Morgan to rob him in his first at-bat. See, that ball stays a little up in arm side, jams him a little bit. Again, two extra base hits in a row. Draw a visit to the mound from Jay Johnson. Talk things over here, just making sure stays settled as Georgia now has a tying run in scoring position. Seventh double of the season for Murillo. He represents the tying run for the Dogs here in the fifth. No activity in the LSU bullpen. It's well documented the struggles that the LSU Tigers bullpen has encountered the last couple of weekends. Last weekend, especially against Mississippi State, a team that is 13th in the conference standings. Here's LaPlante, pitches way outside. It's 1-0. And as I speak, <laughs> en masse, pitchers and catchers go jogging down to the bullpen. 1-0 pitch in the air out of play. LaPlante struck out swinging back in the third inning. Again, just the second batter Skeens has had to face from the stretch. You saw that big miss with the slider in the first pitch of this at bat. See what kind of guy Skeens is from the stretch versus the windup. 1-1 one, one pitch. Wow. Malazzo had to work on his gymnastics <laughs> there to keep that from getting to the backstop. Two balls and a strike to LaPlante. Nine for 18 during his current six game hit streak. Back up the middle base hit. Murillo touches third. He's going to score without a throw. We're tied at two. And good job there by LaPlante. That fastball just at 95. He's been sitting about 97, 98. So Skeen's a little bit less velocity there on that fastball. Still gets in on LaPlante, but he's able to do just enough. Hit it in the right spot of the infield. 26th RBI of the season for LaPlante. Here's Thomas. Swings and misses. So Skeens had no hit the Bulldogs through four innings. Retired Gonzalez to start the inning. Has now given up three consecutive hits. The home run by David. Double by Murillo. Single by LaPlante. Plant is 10 for 10 on stolen base attempts at the Bulldogs. Want to run here. But six of those stolen bases came in the Tennessee series. A couple of good sliders right there to Thomas. 
going to be on defense a little bit. Thomas struck out looking his first time up. 0-2, and Skeens makes quick work of him for strikeout number seven. A tough A-B there for Thomas. Hasn't gotten a whole lot of consistent playing time, and of course coming against one of the best pitchers in the nation. <laughs> he just goes three straight really nasty sliders, and as a hitter, you're always wanting to defend against that fastball. He doesn't even get a chance to see one in that at bat. Ben Anderson batting for the third time. He has struck out twice, swinging and looking. Skeens up to 83 pitches. They'll take him into the one teams. Yep. Yeah, but Georgia in these last two innings has done a good job as Skeens navigated the first three in just 36 pitches. So Georgia doing a good job at running that pitch count up. I think that's part of the strategy. It's to really extend at bats best you can. Obviously able to play a couple of runs in this inning is have the Bulldogs, but really just trying to Keep it close until you can maybe get into that LSU bullpen. Skeens averages 17.17 strikeouts per nine innings. That's in there for a strike two and one. We give that stat a lot. There's something about that stat I like, but there's something about it I don't like because no one pitches nine innings, <laughs> right? That's very true, yeah. <laughs> it should just be strikeouts per inning. It's kind of like, you'd be a millionaire if you could save all of your money. <laughs> but nobody saves all of their money. <laughs> and nobody pitches every nine, the, the entire nine innings. Right. But it sounds good. It's a lot of strikeouts, however you, however you slice it up. No doubt, he's at 159 <laughs> on the season. Throw it a first again, chases back LaPlante. You saw the graphic a few moments ago, the 202 by Ben McDonald, which is the single season record standard set by Big Ben back in 1989. Count now three and two. So you figure Skeens get a, gets a start in the SEC tournament, gets one in a regional. You win that, you get to the Supers, win that, you get, you could, maybe get four more starts this season. Four more starts, he could get Big Ben's record. 3-2, Anderson sends it in the air, foul territory over on the left side, and gonna drop beyond the bullpen down there. Especially if you're averaging about 10 per start. I mean, it's realistic, but you got to figure LSU probably has to get to the College World Series for Skeens to have a shot at that record. And of course, if they get there, they're thinking about bigger things than that. 3-2 pitch. Got him. Strikeout number eight for Skeens as he hits 160 for the season. But the dogs get to him in the fifth with the home run by David, the double by Morello. And then the RBI single by LaPlante. We've got a new game as we head to the sixth in Athens. What's at stake this weekend, aside from who wins the mascot race between innings? LSU, SCC regular season championship is still in the mix, although they're a game behind, game and a half behind Arkansas. They're also looking for top four seed to get a first round by in the SEC tournament. Georgia trying to get in the SEC tournament. And also NCAA Regional. A win and a Mississippi State loss tonight would put Georgia in. Or any combination totaling two of Bulldogs wins and Mississippi State losses here over the next three days. The NCAA Regional component. Now that's a little bit more difficult. Beloso at the plate to start the inning for LSU. He's one for two. And Beloso aboard with a leadoff walk. And the Georgia tournament resume. RPI has fallen to 37. It was in the teens not too long ago. 
Missouri series didn't help. Strength of schedule still strong, and 12 and 17 against the RPI top 50 tonight would be a huge win. That would be number 13 in that category. But right now, projected to miss the tournament. And you figure, at least I figure, they got to at least win this series to get to 12 conference wins and then probably win two, three games in the SEC tournament. I mean, these are all tall tasks for a team that has played better since starting one and nine in the conference. Yeah, they just put themselves in such a hole with that, that rough start to the season they had. Deep fly ball left field off the bat of Thompson, but Connor Tate's going to have room out there. And there's one down. Yeah, really got off to that tough start. You mentioned one in nine. Got things going a little bit in the middle of the season. I think they were right there, headed to Missouri, and then unfortunately were swept. It was a big pothole they fell in. Yeah, fell right back behind. But I think they could salvage and, and find a way to win this series against a great program and a great team that LSU is. Uh, you're right, they, they would be going to the tournament with something at stake for sure. Here's Joe Bear, two-run homer back in the second, the only runs for the Tigers tonight. Then he struck out swinging the last batter that Jarvis Evans faced. Three home runs in his last four games after hitting just one in his first 23. Two balls, no strikes to Joe Bear. He's at eight home runs total on the season. Number eight coming here tonight. He hit his seventh last Friday night in that 12-1 run rule victory against Mississippi State. 3-0 pitch to Joe Bear. Hot shot. LaPlante knocks it down, ate him up. Runners at first and second for the Tigers. Yeah, tough play there for LaPlante. Does his best, kind of tries to take a drop step as the ball was scorched, didn't have a whole lot of time to pick his hop. It was going to be a tweener, so he tried to gain some ground there. If he's able to field that cleanly, it could very well be a double play with how hard the ball was hit. And I, de I definitely think he still gets the lead runner. They score that a base hit, first and second for the Tigers. One down, here's Malazzo. Crisp has come in, and this is as well as Crisp has pitched in a long time. Yeah, he's done a good job at this point. Falling behind some hitters here, though. He had to, got ahead to Belso and then walked him on four straight. It's the fly out to Thompson, then fall behind Joe Bear. Joe Bear in another hitter's count does a good job of getting the head out. Just a little bit too hot to handle there for LaPlante. And Beloso's out there at second base. And there he is right there. Joe Bear at first. 1-1 one, one pitch. Low and away, 2-1. Crisp at one time was kind of the go-to guy out of the bullpen for the Georgia Bulldogs. Has had a starting role here at Georgia. Began his career at Florida. Got off to an incredible start as a freshman with eight saves. 2-1 pitch. Missed inside, 3-1. He's from the state of Georgia, just south of the city in Locust Grove, transferred back to his home state after his freshman season at Florida. But really has not been the same in my mind since he got hurt at the end of last season. And this, again, is as well as I've seen him pitch all year. But he's in trouble right here. It's three and two. To the number nine hitter who's 0 for two tonight. Chopper on the infield. Murillo goes to LaPlante. One on to first. Double play. A 6-4-3 double play, and Malazzo might be hurt. He went awkwardly over that first base bag, and he is slow to get up, and he is hobbling. So Malazzo stumbling around out there. Hopefully he can continue. He's a catcher. He's tough. But that ends the inning. Still 
Well, good for Alex Malazzo. He's going to stay in the game. Uh, he hyperextended that right knee as he hit the bag. His leg kind of went straight up and down. Uh, but he was able to get the gear back on in the dugout between innings. A tough kid right there. That's not easy, especially in the lower extremities, obviously, as a catcher. But he's toughing it out right there for his pitcher, Paul Skeens. I mean, that's what he's in there for. You got a catcher hitting in the nine hole. He's there to be a catcher. And he's clocking in today. Here's Charlie Condon. Bloops this one foul over towards the Georgia dugout, Georgia bullpen. 0 for 2 tonight. Don't see a lot of that with Charlie. 0 1 pitch to Condon. And it's 0 2. Yeah, pulled the string right there. There's that change up right on right. Charlie's got a 10 game hitting streak, batting 450 during the streak. And he swings and misses. It goes to the backstop. And Malazzo has to test out that knee right away. Can't get to it. Yeah, it looked like another changeup. Just kind of stays low. That's the one that goes through the five hole. That changeup that kind of stays low. You maybe reach out a little too soon and get extended as a catcher trying to catch it for a strike and just tips off your glove. Looked like that's what happened there to Malazzo. Heads up there by Condon. Able to reach first base, he was off and running right away. So Skeens gets strikeout number nine, but Condon reaches anyway, and here's Connor Tate. Ball one to Connor Tate. Bulldogs career home run leader with 42, number six. Active career home run leader. He's number six on the all-time list. His next one will tie Rich Poitras for number five on that list. And I think the bigger thing with Condon able to reach is Schemes really has been a different guy out of the stretch. He's been a little bit more hittable. And right here, Tate finds himself in a hitter's count, more on the attack than on the defense. 2-0 pitch, right back up the middle, base hit. Condon hits second and will stop there. And Connor Tate with the base hit. Four hits now for the Dogs. They had been no hit through the first four innings. Three hits for George in the fifth, and now Connor Tate with a base hit here in the sixth. So first and second for Georgia. Nobody out here to start the inning, and here's Parks Harbor. He has struck out twice. And you wonder what kind of skills Harbor has as a bunter here as White is playing short left field, very deep at third. We get a visit to the mound to talk this over. But I don't think Harbor's even thinking about it. You'd like to have that in your back pocket. You just lay something down on that left side. I think he walks to first base. That's for, that's for guys like us. Not, <laughs> Park, sorry, he's swinging. He's swinging, yeah, no, definitely got the pop. But I'm swinging for that fence. He's had trouble with that slider from Skeens. Now, I know it's, it's 7.52 Eastern time. We're probably about 38, 40 minutes from sunset here. But it looks darker than usual. Is it? Yeah, I mean, a little bit of twilight. You know, with the blue sky being what it is, a couple of those fly balls have been a little tougher to track, but not invisible. And I think Harbor right here just has to focus on getting something in play as he struck out in his first two at-bats. 2-0 to Harbor. I was thinking more in lines. We don't have rain coming back, do we? We had rain throughout the yeah. afternoon, which was kind of a surprise. Kept the tarp on the field to about an hour before game time. Actually, about 45 minutes before game time. And the grounds crew here did a tremendous job of getting the tarp off the field, getting it lined, and we started on time. You can kind of see behind home plate where the tarp was and wasn't. Still wet back there where the tarp wasn't. 2-1 pitch to Harbor, popped him up and out of play. It's 2-2. Two two. 
Couple of good fastballs there from Skeens and fastball counts. Harbor's still just a little bit behind. He's got to contend with that breaking ball, at least have it in the back of his mind here with two strikes. Skeens approaching 100 pitches. 2-2 pitch. Got him with the high fastball. Strikeout number 10. Double-digit strikeouts now for Skeens in 12 of his 14 starts. Impressive. Here's Gonzalez, 0 for 2, with one down in the inning. Tigers looking for a double play here, just like Georgia to get out of the inning, just as Georgia did with their catcher, the LSU catcher, batting in the previous half inning. LSU one for six runners in scoring position. Georgia one for one just until recently have not had any opportunities. They only had one base runner through the first four innings. And that one for one was the base hit by LaPlante after the Murillo double an inning to go. 1-1, one, one, back up the middle. Skeens got it with his hand, knocked it down, throws to first, retires Gonzalez. And that's the last thing anybody wants to see Skeens do is try to barehand a ball back up the middle no matter how slowly it might be hit. Yeah, I think he, he got it out there that, that wasn't going to be available had he not knocked it down. This ball just going to trickle by and maybe hit off his foot even. Maybe. I know Gonzalez is a catcher but runs well for a catcher, so it would have been a tough play for Thompson at shortstop to cut across and make. So two down in the inning as Condon advances to third and Tate to second. Here's Will David who slugged his sixth home run of the season last time up. Line drive, hit the right field, misplayed for just a moment by Joe Bear, but he is able to react and retreat and make the catch for the final out of the inning as the dog strand two here in the sixth. Head into the seventh, got a good one going in Athens. So interesting move here by Scott Strickland as he goes to his freshman closer here to start the seventh inning, Leighton Finley. He's two and two on the season, ERA is 6.12, but a good strikeout to walk ratio in 25 innings of work. Finley has a team leading four saves. He's gonna have that low, low 90s fastball Touch kind of a mid, maybe get up to 95 and touch it a little bit, but got the good breaking ball, throws a lot of strikes. And I think that's why the move is being made right here, kind of get him in in this tight ball game. I think on the back end, maybe you close it down with Marsh, who's yeah. similar to Finley, has a little bit more elevated fastball and a bigger breaking ball. Both of the guys are similar in style, but Finley's gonna compete, stay in that strike zone. What a great job Chris did. Yeah mentioned uh, during the break we were just talking that's the, the best he's looked all season did a great job at keeping this ball game close got the big ground ball double played in last inning and Finley starts things off to Dugas with ball one yeah you gotta really tip your hat to Evans and Crisp for Georgia they have not been the 10 strikeout masterpiece Rembrandt that Skeens has been but they got the job done and Georgia's locked in a 2-2 tie with fifth-ranked LSU as we start the seventh inning. Matt Stewart and Jason Jacobs with you. Two more games to go in the series. Tomorrow night, 6 o'clock Eastern, and then Saturday, 1 o'clock. Strike called, and it's 1-1 one one to Dugas, 1-2 to Dugas. And he's 0-2, for 2, walked in the first. The only time he's been on base, flew out in the third and grounded out in the fifth. Called strike three, Finley starts his night of work with a strikeout. That's six strikeouts now for Bulldogs pitcher. Yeah, backs up a good breaking ball, leaves this one a little bit arm side. You see Dugas kind of gets tied up there, the high breaking ball. David's got to catch that a little bit deeper, make it look a, a little better for the LSU dugout who was, <laughs> they thought that ball was a little up in the, in the zone. Looks like. They were letting Brandon Cooper know their opinion and he's jotting it down there as he issues a warning. 
to the LSU dugout. Taking down names. Detention coming for you, fellas. Here's uh, Trey Morgan. Solid sock to center field. Anderson has it measured, however, for out number two. Morgan swinging a good at bat. Really squared a couple of balls up well in this game. Yeah, like his approach. Good short swing. That single to the right side. His first at bat had a deep fly out to center as well. After two quick outs, they're going to give Skeens a little breather. He had a back to back stressful innings. Yep. He's not going to waste some time over here yep. with a pseudo timeout. He's getting close to that century mark. He's above the century mark at this point. Mentioned him going into the one team, so possibly just one inning left for him on the chart. Got some action in the LSU bullpen, so it might actually be to stall. Get the next pitcher enough time to get loose as well. Saw Jay Johnson talking to his two dudes right there. Cruz and Tommy White. Tommy White on deck if Cruz can reach. He's already extended his on-base streak to 57 consecutive games. Been on base twice in this game. A single in the third. Reached on an error in the fifth. Struck out once. That was back in the first. Count 2-0 and now to Cruz. Coach Johnson telling us really shows the maturity of this young man, Cruz, out of Lake Mary High School in Florida. I mean, every time he walks in the ballpark, he's the best player out there. He's the number one guy on the scouting report. He just keeps executing, getting the job done. 2 1 pitch. 3 and 1 now from Finley. Yeah, four straight breaking balls after that meeting to slow things down. I thought Finley might just sneak a strike in, thinking Cruz would be taken the whole way. 3-1. Called strike on the breaking ball, and it's 3-2. Three and, three and two. A great catch there by David as that was bearing down. He reached out, held it at the bottom of the zone. I think he won that pitch. Breaking ball, chopper, Murillo. Got him. Good stretch by Condon. Three up, three down for Finley and the Dogs. Headed to the seventh inning stretch. Here's a look at tonight's SEC Network scoreboard. Bama leading Ole Miss 4-0, top of the fifth. Florida leads Kentucky 3-2, top of the sixth. Arkansas 5-0 lead on Vanderbilt, top of the fourth. A&M and Mississippi State 1-1 in the third. Tennessee, South Carolina already postponed until tomorrow, and Missouri and Auburn in a weather delay. An Arkansas win tonight and an LSU loss would clinch the West Division title for the Razorbacks and guaranteed that LSU could finish no higher than the number three seed. Here's Murillo leading off the inning. 1-1 one, one pitch from Skeens. It's 2-1. and one. The top two seeds in the SEC tournament are the division winners regardless of record. So the top record division winner, regular season champions, number one seed, and then the other, even if a team in the other division has a better record, the other division winner will be the number two seed. In that case, in the case of the example right now, that would be Florida. 2-2 pitch to Murillo, and that's ball three. Dogs went one and two against the Gators down in Gainesville this year. Got walked off in a heartbreaker. Marillo goes down swinging. 11 strikeouts now for Paul Skeens. I mean, it doesn't even look like he's trying that hard, does he? Has he broken a sweat yet? Yeah, I'm I don't sure. think so. Either. Looks like he just started the game, and then you look at the you look at a radar gun, and it looks like he just started the game, too. His fastball's at 98, and he's 110 pitches. He started the game at 98. Here's LaPlante. This might be his last inning, though, as he's now at 111 pitches. He's in a 99 there late in his outing. He's slipping a little bit. (laughs) 
Here's the 1-0 pitch. LaPlante fouls that one back. His season-high pitches, 117 for Skeens. That was in his victory at Ole Miss. His season-high innings is seven and a third scoreless against Auburn in that 3 nothing victory in which he struck out a career-high 15. LaPlante backhanded by Thompson on the grass throw and got him. What a play by Jordan Thompson. Another Sports Center top 10 nominee. What a play right there, using his turf as well. It's going to be, they're going to go to review on that. But boy, hard hit ball, does a good job, stops his feet, uses the turf right there. Good pickup by Beloso at first. So slow it down a little bit, and we'll take a look at it as the umpires go to the replay booth. Well, There's a quick call there by first base umpire Damian Deal. Gosh, regardless how it turns out, what an effort right there by Thompson. We'll slow it down for you. And here's what the umpires are looking at. Got him. You think? Looks like that ball's in the glove just before the foot hits the bag. Yep, the call is upheld. Super play by Jordan Thompson, two down in the inning. And that's one of those two where your ears are going to tell you a little bit more. You're going to be able to hear that foot come out, come down on the bag and, and the ball hit the leather. Justin Thomas is 0 for 2 tonight. Struck out looking, struck out swinging. That's four straight sliders he's seen. He saw three in his last at bat. Steen starts him off with another right there. Another breaking ball for strike. It's 0-2. Kind of the book's out, unfortunately, on the freshman in that, you know, he's going to have to learn to hit that pitch. Yeah, absolutely. Got him on three straight breaking balls. Skeens, 12 strikeouts tonight for the nation's strikeout leader. But we're locked in the 2-2 tie as we head to the eighth. Game summaries, we head to the top of the eighth. We've got a dandy going here. Number five, LSU and Georgia tied at two. Skeens, 12 strikeouts through seven innings. Joe Bear, the only runs for LSU with a two-run homer in the second. They've left six on. Bulldogs have gotten three and a third scored us from the bullpen. Will David solo home run, Mason LaPlante, RBI single following a double by Sebastian Marillo, and that's your scoring for the night so far. Will David takes another shot off the top of his helmet as Tommy White stands in. I mean, he's taken some jolts tonight. <laughs> yeah, for it not being his primary position, I mean, he's the third string catcher. He's done a good job. He's improved every game he's been back there filling in for Gonzalez. A one to White. Hit out of play, it's 0-2. Tommy White, 0 for 2, popped up to right in the first, flew out to right in the third, intentionally walked in the fifth. Breaking ball, got him on three pitches. Finley has struck out two of the first four batters that he's faced. Good breaking ball right there. We had mentioned White, tough to strike out. Especially with how much power he has. I think he's got a little piece of that on the way by, but David able to squeeze it for strike three. Here's Travinsky. He takes a big cut and misses the 94-mile-per-hour fastball. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Struck out back in the second. Pitch outside to Travinsky. He has homered in each of his last four SEC series at Ole Miss. Bama at Auburn and Mississippi State. The key with Travinsky is he just finally he's healthy. He was banged up most of last year. Coach Johnson says, man, this is not the program where you want to get hurt. I mean, because <laughs> we're deep. Alluded to the fact he feels like we got a couple of major leaguers on the bench. If you can't play, you fall behind on the depth chart. Travinsky. Finally healthy and doing damage. 
and sends this one to deep left field, and it is out of here. Hayden Travinsky has now homered in five consecutive SEC series. He puts LSU on top 3-2 here in the eighth. Boy, what a great job right there. It looked like he almost set Finley up. Finley had thrown a breaking ball, started right at Travinsky, kind of froze him on the previous pitch, and then it looked like he set on the breaking ball. Finley doubles him up. He makes him pay for it. Puts LSU up by one. Here's Beloso. There's a strike to Beloso. Been on base twice tonight after striking out in the second, singled in the fourth, walked in the sixth. Oh, and two. Hit his 10th home run of the season back on Tuesday night. Going back to back with Travinsky in that win over McNeese. Goes down swinging on three pitches right there, two down in the inning. Good little change up there by Finley. A little action down on it. Almost looks like it's got split finger action. Jordan Thompson at the plate for the fourth time. He's been on base twice, walked twice. Been getting it done with his glove tonight as well. 1-0 pitch from Finley. Hit to right field. Thomas can't get to it. And it skims over the top of the wall for the home run. That thing just barely cleared the wall, but it was high enough in the shortest portion of the ballpark. LSU with a couple of home runs here in the eighth to take a 4-2 lead. Thompson with a great play defensively in the previous inning. It's a nice short swing. I thought that 0-0 pitch looked like it might have been a strike. That ball up in the zone. Thompson barrels it up. Knew he got it. Knew it had a chance. Wasn't really hustling out of the box. That ball barely snuck out, but did hit it on the nose. And it looks like Scott Strickland's going to go to the bullpen. That will drive Leighton Finley from the game as Colin Caldwell comes on to pitch for Georgia. Solo home runs from Travinsky and then two batters later, Thompson gives LSU a two-run lead here in the top of the eighth. Well, with two runs in, two outs in the inning, Colin Caldwell's job is to get the left-hander, Joe Bear, here and get the Bulldogs back in the dugout to swing the bat. But He's coming off perhaps his best outing of the season. Two scoreless, hitless innings of relief in that 5-4 loss at Missouri on Sunday. Walked two, struck out two on 34 pitches. Good, good start right there, Caldwell, with that slider. Very tough on lefties. The trouble he has is coming in on that lefty specialist role is sometimes he has a tough time getting into the zone, so. Strike one huge for him right there. And ball one right there. All four runs for LSU have come on three home runs. A two-run homer by Joe Bear back in the second. Solo shots from Travinsky and Thompson here in the eighth. 1-1 one, one pitch. Joe Bear up the middle, and that's going to get through for a base hit. So let's see if... Strickland stays with the left-hander here with Malazzo coming up. I don't, a bunch of guys down there, I haven't noticed who's been warming up and who hasn't, but it looks like they're sticking with Caldwell. And that's, next lefty up is three batters away. So. Yep. And then you got three consecutive right-handers after Morgan bats. And let's face it, if it gets to that, LSU's uh, putting up some crooked numbers. Yes. In this inning, if it gets to that. Malazzo, 0 for 3, hit into a 6 4 3 double play his last time up. And that was the last batter that Crisp 
faced. Crisp went two and a third, scoreless innings, one hit ball. One zero pitch from Caldwell. There's a strike on the edge, and it's one and one. Malazzo came in batting just 268 in conference play. One one pitch from Caldwell. That's going to be ball two. Yep, they appeal down to first base, and the umpire there, Damian Bill, said he did not offer. So the count's two and one. Hitters count right here for Malazzo with Joe Bear at first base. Called strike at the knees, and it's two and two. Caldwell trying to get the dogs back in the dugout. Step and throw over. LSU's just three and four in their last seven games since that career-high 15 strikeout performance by Skeens against Auburn a couple of weeks ago. Caldwell chases again. Joe Bear did not have a big lead. I guess the big question mark right now is Skeens coming out to pitch the eighth. 2-2 pitch, ball three. It's been a rather lengthy inning, too. It's been on the bench in the dugout for a while now. That is the big question, though. I mean, you know, LSU's got a lot of question marks in that bullpen. Able to tag the Bulldogs for a couple of runs at the top half of this inning. I wonder if Georgia gets a shot at their bullpen in the next. Malazzo goes down swinging. We're going to find out here momentarily as Caldwell gets out of the inning with no further damage done. But the Tigers tack on two runs with the long ball. Heading to the bottom half. LSU on top 4-2. Well, this is why LSU fans shudder when someone other than Paul Skeens is pitching. You look at the numbers he's put up. You look at the other starting pitchers. And then you look at the bullpen. And that's where they're going right now as we head to the eighth. Skeens has been dominant, and he was dominant again tonight. Giving up two runs on four hits, seven innings, one walk, 12 strikeouts. But now the Tigers have gone to the bullpen. And Skeens would be the winning pitcher here after the Tigers scored two in the top of the eighth if the bullpen can hold it for them. Riley Cooper, the 6'2", 270 junior left-hander on the pitch for LSU. Making his team leading 23rd appearance. He's 3-3 three and three in a 5.93 ERA. 41 strikeouts in 41 innings. 1-0 pitch is a strike and it's 1-1. One and one. Hasn't walked a lot of guys, 13. Opponents batting 298 against him though. Here's the 1-1 pitch from Cooper and it's 2-1. Count now three and one. Cooper gave up a three-run homer in the eighth inning to complete Mississippi State's six-run comeback inning in that 9-4 loss to the Bulldogs on Saturday. He ended up surrendering four hits over two innings in that stunning loss that evened up the series a week ago. Three balls and two strikes to Ben Anderson. Ball four, Riley Cooper stops and stares. Shakes his head. 
Bulldogs bring the tie and run to the plate, and that's going to be the only batter that Riley Cooper faces. The only left-hander in the Georgia order. And now you've got eight right-handers following Ben Anderson. And the most dangerous one of them all coming to the plate. Close pitch there from Cooper at the end, but I think you got it right. right? Uh, Brandon Cooper behind the plate, of course, just a little bit off the plate. A good job there by Anderson, who really has had good at-bats all night. With three strikeouts against Skeens, but tough not to strike out against him. Finally draws the walk, finds, him, finds his way on it. Gets Condon up to the plate representing the time run. You can see Riley Cooper still agitated with that call by home plate umpire Brandon Cooper as he makes his way through the huddle and into the dugout. And Thatcher Hurd on the pitch for LSU. If they have a closer, this is the guy. They have only three saves from Thatcher heard this season, he is their saves leader. They only have 12. They haven't played a lot of close games, not, not a lot of one-run games. In fact, LSU has played only four one-run games the entire season. Three and one, those three wins coming in the SEC. And here's Hurd's numbers, three and two. The ERA is seven. In 36 innings, 50 strikeouts. Big number there, but the 28 walks also a big number. Kind of got an awkward delivery there, short arms it. Fastball's going to be in the mid-90s range, got the slider off that. Some swing and miss stuff, I'd have heard. But he's no Paul Skeens, and I think that's the, the tricky part with this bullpen coming in from behind him. As an offense, you've grinded against one of the best pitchers in the country, so you're relieved to see anyone else out there. And you, you go more on the hunt. I think that also contributes a little bit to the bullpen troubles. Yeah, they've also used him in a starting role this season. Nine starts, eight appearances out of the bullpen. In conference, three starts, four appearances out of the bullpen. He's 0-2 in the conference, a couple of saves in the conference, so half of his four saves have come in league games. But his ERA in conference is 19.29, and opponents are batting 383 against him. Yeah, in I think conference play. I think you were Georgia and you were told that coming into this ball game against Skeens and, and this offense that LSU has, you were going to be in this position here late in the ball game, down by just two, tying run up in the form of Charlie Condon, and you're into LSU's bullpen. I think you take it. He was the losing pitcher last Saturday night in relief in that 9 4 defeat to Mississippi State, picked up his third save of the season on Tuesday night against McNeese. Here's Charlie Condon, throws him a breaking ball, and it's 0-1. Ball one to Charlie Condon. Ten-game hitting streak has not extended it yet here tonight. Has reached base in all but two of the 52 games he's played. Hot shot over there, makes people duck in the LSU dugout. Count is one and two to Charlie Condon. And three straight sliders here from Hurd. He's got a curveball in his back pocket as well. So Condon hadn't even had a chance to size up that mid-90s fastball. One, two pitch from Hurd, breaking ball, got him. Nasty bender right there to strike out Condon for the first out of the inning. Stuck with the slider the whole way did Hurd. Probably threw his best one right there to Condon to get the strikeout. Starts it right there on the outside part of the plate and then it just breaks away. I think Condon may be thinking he was going to try and sneak a fastball by him. Here's Connor Tate. Fastball 96. Is out of the zone, however. It's 1-0 to Tate. Singled his last time up. Walked the time prior to that. Grounded out his first time up. So he's one for two. Yeah. One ball, one strike to Tate. A bit of an awkward swing there on that slider. Looked like it backed up a little bit. Tate a little bit late to pull the trigger on it. 
Ball two. Tate had a 12-game hitting streak ended in last Saturday's 14-12 loss at Missouri. He has hit safely, however, in 13 of his last 14 games, batting 472 during that stretch with four doubles, three homers, 15 RBI. But he's behind in the count, or evened up on the count now, two and two. Yeah, another one of an awkward, another bit of an awkward swing right there on a high breaking ball. Breaking ball you could use a little bit of damage on. 2-2 two, two from her. Breaking ball, Tate didn't bite at it. It's three and two. Tate showing the experience that maybe Condon doesn't have yet, able to lay off that good slider starting on the outside part of the plate. 3-2 pitch, ball four, tying run at first base. Second walk of the inning. And here is Parks Harbor. He's glad that Paul Skeens is out of the game. He's pitched Struck out tough. three times. Here comes Jay Johnson. More to be a quick visit here. We're trying to get on the same page when we're calling that slider. We don't necessarily want it for a swing and miss, but more of a strike situation. Maybe tell him he needs to feature the fastball a little bit as well. It's a pretty good one, 94 to 96. Tigers 17 and 9 in the SEC. Christian Little, the former Vanderbilt Commodore, warming up in the bullpen for the Tigers. 17 and 9 record is their best conference record through 26 games since they won the championship back in 2017. Won the regular season and the tournament title that year and finished as the national runners up to Florida in the championship series. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Harbor. Chopper on the infield. Thompson waits on it. Gets the out there. Dugas on to first. Not in time. They cut down the middle runner. So now two down in the inning and runners at the corners for Georgia. Thompson does a good job of getting that started, but not quite hit hard enough for two right there. Here's Fernando Gonzalez with two down in the inning. Breaking ball strike. Gonzalez 0 for 3 here in the DH roll tonight. Did hit his 12th career home run in six of the season last Saturday at Missouri. Counts 0 and 2 to Gonzalez. Harbor at first, Anderson at third. Dogs down two here in the eighth. In the air. Let's see if it's playable. Won't be. Balls, two strikes to Fernando Gonzalez. Heard the third pitcher used by the Tigers tonight, the second in the inning. Count one and two. Skeens, 116 pitches. No hit the Bulldogs through four. Gave up two runs on four hits with 12 strikeouts. One, two pitch from Hurd. Again hit foul and out of play. Defensive changes, by the way, for the Tigers. Morgan's moved in from left field to play first base. And Josh Pearson is now taken over in left field. One-two pitch. Ooh, tantalizing. <laughs> Close pitch right there. Gonzalez able to lay off. This herd just continues steady dose of sliders. Two balls, two strikes. 
in the air. Should be the third out of the inning. The short side, but dropped it. He dropped it. Run scores for Georgia. I don't know what happened there. Jordan Thompson has had a great night at shortstop, made some spectacular plays. Looked like he was camped under it till the last second and couldn't come up with it. Gonzalez reaches second. It's four to three. Yeah, you mentioned the, the sky getting a little bit darker. Looks like he picks it up just fine. But late, wind swirling a little bit, hits him right in the heel of the glove. So Harbor's now at third. Gonzalez goes all the way to second on the pop-up to the shortstop. The wind is, I think the wind is the biggest explanation there, yeah. don't you think? Yeah, a little bit of the night sky, a little bit of that twilight happening, but it looked like Thompson had a beat on it right off the bat. Just late, started moving his feet, didn't quite get under the ball. You saw how low his glove was, below his eyes. You really want to catch that above your eyes. Here's Will David, ball one to him. Stunning development here. Hurd got the final out. Looked like it was going to be an easy play for Jordan Thompson. But the error keeps the dogs alive here in the eighth. Opens the door for them perhaps to take the lead here with David at the plate. And he fouls it out of play. I mean, that just shocked me. As well as Thompson has played shortstop here tonight. For him to flub a routine play like that. 1-1 pitch in the air again. Thompson's going to get another chance. He and doesn't see it. it, I don't think. The second baseman finally does, and Dugas comes up with it, and it nearly popped out of his glove. Thompson had no idea where it was, and then Dugas had to recover with the wind blowing it backwards. 4-3 heading to the ninth. Wow, this was scary close to being a disaster for LSU in the field. In the end of the eighth, you see Dugas recovered, and there was a lot of white showing in that <laughs> glove as he was able to pull it in to his body and corral it for yeah, the final that, out. That ball also hit the heel of his glove, and, and just fortunate for Dugas, popped kind of up instead of out and down, and he was able to snow cone it and secure it at the end. You could see him putting his throwing hand around there and taking a deep sigh of relief. As I don't think anyone saw that off the bat. Dalton Radans on the pitch here in the ninth for the Bulldogs. Radans making his 31st appearance of the season, which is number one in the SEC. He has finished 12 games this season, called on to try to finish this one for Georgia. Fifth most games finished as Dugas leads off the inning for the Tigers here in the ninth. He just made that play and saved their bacon in the bottom of the eighth. But you could see, I believe the wind is really picked up and blowing in hard from the outfield towards home plate. And now we have a little bit of a spit misting rain yeah. falling too. So I think all that in defense of the LSU fielders and that ball is cranked to deep left field. And Connor Tate, now he has to battle the win. He has it for out number one. Without that win, that might gets out. <laughs> Yeah, it might. Uh, off the bat, it was definitely crank. You could see the outfielders still having some trouble picking up the ball as well as Anderson was pointing at it to try and help Tate, who I think had a beat on it from the beginning. But that swirling wind. Not these... to mention you got rain mist blowing in your eyes too. One down here. Here's Morgan. Now the first baseman. Pitch missed inside to him. It's 1-0. I can feel some of that mist kind of blowing into our booth right now. That's not allowed. <laughs> one ball, one strike to Morgan. It's turned into a wild night here. This is the final regular season series. Look LSU trying to keep alive their hopes of winning an SEC championship. Georgia trying to keep alive their hopes of just getting in the SEC tournament. Just looking at the lights, the light banks, especially in left field, you can see the way the, the mist is blowing around. It's not a consistent wind. It's definitely swirling 
and even coming down at times. So and that definitely came into play with the dropped pop up by Jordan Thompson, the near drop by Gavin Dugas right at Harbor. I tell you what, Morgan has hit the ball on the button three times tonight, has one hit to show for it. And that was the softest ball he's hit. It was. Two strikes, the base hit. Just able to kind of put something in play and find a hole on the right side of the infield, but really has squared up three of his five at bats. He squared the ball up. Going to finish the night in all likelihood, barring a tie at one for five. And here's Dylan Cruz. Averages dropped to 434. Number two in the nation on base percentage. Drives this one out of here. Boom. In the trees. Dylan Cruz makes it five to three. Just a no doubt about it. Home run number 14 for Cruz, RBI number 56. Gives LSU a little breathing room here in the ninth. That was a line drive with power right there. Not very much of a home run swing, just a good line shot that kept carrying out of the yard. Good short, compact, arm side slider just stays arm side. Cruz makes Ray ants pay. Can't be thinking about that one facing this guy because he'll send it over the wall too. Hit off the end of the bat. Tate makes a run for it, gets it in fair territory just inside the line for out number three. But LSU gets some insurance here on the home run by Dylan Cruz. Dogs trail 5-3 as we head to the bottom of the ninth. We're heading to the bottom of the ninth here at Foley Field, and uh, two spots are left in the SEC tournament picture. Three teams are still in the running. National champion Ole Miss eliminated already. Missouri and Georgia at 10 and 17. Right now, Missouri with the 11 seed, Georgia the 12 seed, Mississippi State trailing by two games in that mix. Georgia's magic number is two. Any combination of Georgia wins, Mississippi State losses totaling two eliminates the Maroon Bulldogs. Marillo leading off the ninth for Georgia. Dogs are down two runs now. Swing and a miss. And it's 0-2 from Hurd. So the Dogs, barring a comeback, will drop to 10 and 18. Mississippi State, though, is losing right now. They could be on the way to being eight and 20, means the magic number would be reduced to one for Georgia. One-two pitch to Murillo. That is stroke towards the gap in right center field. He's got a chance. Back to the wall, it's gone! Sebastian Murillo makes it 5-4. Home run number five, RBI number 21. The answer's back there after Cruz's home run, gave him two, gets the ball up in the zone. The ball starting to carry a little bit even though the wind's blowing in. And Georgia gets to basically start the ninth just down by one. Here's LaPlante, strike one to LaPlante. So the Dogs with five hits tonight, two of them extra base hits by Marillo, a double in the fifth. LaPlante hits that to Thompson. Out number one. And Garrett Spikes is going to grab a bat and pinch hit for Justin Thomas here. Yeah, Justin Thomas is struggling with that slider. Hurd's been featuring it most of this outing. Garrett Spikes getting a shot here. Small sample size. Spikes this season is just four for 19. But two of his four hits have been doubles. He's got some power if he can connect. He's 0 for 3 in conference play this year. 
This is a tough spot to walk into, isn't it? <laughs> Not easy sitting on the bench for eight innings, getting called upon in a tight ball game like this. Got the shift on for Spikes. Drives this one deep to center field. Going back is Cruz right there at the track for out number two. Spikes gave it a ride. But now two down, and the Bulldogs are down to their final out. Yeah, he sure did give it a ride. I couldn't help him look up at the flag blowing straight into the alley that he hit it, helping the ball out to right, but knocking it down to left. Yeah, if he had been able to get around on that and let that uh, win help push it out to right, might have had a chance. Here's Ben Anderson. Ball one to Ben Anderson. Walked in the eighth after striking out three times against Skeens. One-zero pitch. That ball is hit deep to right field. Might go. It does. We're tied at five. Holy smokes! Anderson cheats to the fastball. Good short stroke. You mentioned strikes out in his first three at bat against Skeens. Sees her, draws the walk in his first at bat, gets a fastball there, and ties this ball game up. Heck of a ball game. Condon on the infield, Thompson on the hopper will throw him out, and we're going to extra innings. Wow. Dogs hit two solo home runs in the bottom of the ninth to extend the fifth-ranked LSU Tigers to the 10th. Otis Baseball here at Foley Field as the Dogs hit two home runs in the bottom of the ninth to extend this ball game to the 10th inning. Chandler Marshall take the mound. Marsh, another good arm out of this Georgia bullpen. Fastball in the mid 90s, got a big break of ball, a lot like Leighton Finley. He's looked to keep the Dogs in it as they have just battled back. He's got Travinsky. And Pearson and Thompson to face here in the top half of the 10th. And I think the LSU Tigers are a little shocked right now that we're playing. Yeah, I think so. I mean, when they got the uh, home run by Dylan Cruz in the ninth, you got the sense they felt like, or at least I felt like they could breathe a little bit easier. I can't tell you what they thought, but I was thinking, wow, you can breathe a little bit easier. Now you got a 5-3 lead. But Georgia was able to strike with Two lightning bolts from Murillo, and then Anderson in the bottom of the ninth, and now we're playing in the 10th. Here's the 0-1 from Marsh, guns it by him, it's 0-2. I saw Marsh take the mound after that inning. He was fired up. Going in there throwing 95. Here's the 0-2 pitch, got him on three pitches. Marsh smokes it by Travinsky for the first out of the 10th. Again, Marillo hit that ball and lead off the inning. It's a home run to get him within one, and he was fired up. You would have thought he tied the ball game. And there's some life in that Georgia dugout. They feel like they belong here, and they can hang with this number four in the country, number five in the country, LSU team. They give them an, everything they can handle again, you know. Coming into this series, you look at Skeens and you're thinking, you know, all right, it's going to be tough to beat him, but got to credit Evans, Chris, Finley, and Caldwell to get him to this point. Well, they were able to follow the script that Scott Strickland talked to us about. We sat in his office talking to him before the game, and he said, look, we just, you know, survive Skeens, get into their bullpen. Yeah. The pitching did just enough. They had to piece it together, I think. Evans maybe didn't have his best stuff. Crisp looked fantastic. 
but they've done enough to put themselves in a position here to win the ball game late. And like you said, get to that LSU bullpen. This is Josh Pearson. He's batting for the first time since coming on when they moved Trey Morgan to first base. Beloso came out of the game, and so he's batting in Beloso's old spot and playing in left field. Breaking ball from Marsh. It's 0-2. He has done nothing but throw strikes since coming out of the bullpen. Here's a guy I think could be a closer, maybe one day a starter. I mean, this guy's just got phenomenal stuff when he's on. He's got great stuff, and he's got the mentality that he's got right now. He's really tough. Back-to-back -to -back strikeouts as Marsh dispatches Travinsky and Pearson on six pitches. And we've had an opportunity to watch Marsh all season long, and that's been his tough job. And the tough part of his job is getting that third strike. He's done a great job of being 0-2. Sometimes starts to nibble a little bit. Right now, just continuing to challenge the zone with his good stuff. And I think that's one of the things that surprises people a lot around the SEC. I'm talking about fans and viewers. They look at Georgia, they see the record, and then they see some of the arms that Georgia has, and it just sometimes it doesn't add up. And that's just simply because, you know, guys like Marsh, as good as he is right now, he's walked too many guys this yeah. season. But when he's on, and he was on in that Tennessee series for sure, he is really good. Here's the 1-1 one -one from Marsh. Breaking ball, and it's 1-2. and two. I think starts at really the, the batter's, the bill of the batter's helmet. He breaks all the way down to the knees. Just a, a huge breaking ball to back up that mid-90s fastball. Fouled back. Thompson keeps it alive. Great job by Thompson there, having to fend against that big breaker, able to see that high fastball deep and just get a piece of it to stay alive. One, two from Marsh. Breaking ball, cold strike three. 11 pitch inning for Marsh as he strikes out the side. Wow. Marsh comes in on fire. Head to the bottom of the 10th. Dogs got a chance to walk it off. Apparently not a lot. <laughs> Here's what happened in the bottom of the ninth. Sebastian Murillo over the right field wall made it 5-4. Then Ben Anderson over the right field wall to tie it up 5-5. And this game was tied 2-2 heading to the eighth. We've had five home runs hit from these two teams combined in the last two innings. And now Connor Tate will lead off the bottom of the 10. Tate has got a flair for the dramatic. Ball one and Hurd still out there. They brought Hurd in in the eighth inning. 1-0 pitch, inside, 2-0. Every batter represents the winning run for Georgia. 2-0 pitch, checks his swing, it's 3-0. They appeal down to first and Damian Bill confirms it, it's 3-0. Three balls, no strikes to Connor Tate. Strike one, 94, right down the middle. Yeah, a little surprised that he didn't have the green light right there. Or maybe he didn't, didn't just like the pitch, but I thought Hurd would groove him a fastball right there with Tate's experience. 3-1 pitch. Line drive, center field, base hit. Bulldogs have the winning run at first base. Coach Johnson's face in the background, just kind of feeling the flow of this game, all the momentum in Georgia's dugout right now. A little bit of a beleaguered bullpen. Some Bulldogs smell a little bit of blood in the water here. Here's Parks Harbor. Strike one. 
Harbor came into the game with a four-game hitting streak. He's not been able to extend it. Struck out three times, reached on a fielder's choice in the eighth. 0-1 pitch. Ball one to Harbor. He's got three walk-offs in his career. 1-1 one, one pitch, swing and a miss, and it's one and two. Of course, most recently, the solo home run following the grand slam by Connor Tate in that 9-8 stunner against Arkansas when the Dogs scored five runs in the ninth to sweep the series. 1-2 pitch to Thompson. Goes to second one, on to first, double play. Tigers turn the twin killing, 6-4-3, and now there's two down here in the 10th. God, a tough night for Harbor, just continues. First three at bats, strikes out against Skeens, and a fielder's choice in his last at bat, the ground ball double play right there, kind of deflates that balloon, but Gonzalez still with a shot here. Ball one to Gonzalez. Reached on the pop-up, dropped by Thompson back in the eighth. One-zero pitch from her, in tight, two and zero. Two-zero pitch, in the air, out of play. It's two and one. Dogs trying to get to 29 wins, and number 11. They can get that win, depending upon what happens with Mississippi State. They could clinch their berth in the SEC tournament. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Outside, 3-1. Hurd is at 43 pitches. Three one pitch called strike and it's three and two. What a way to start this series. Three two pitch got him inning over heard with the big strikeout. After he'd given up a single to Tate to start the inning, comes back and gets Harbor and Gonzalez, and we're headed to the 11th. Game summaries, we now have reached the top of the 11th. Skeens gave up two runs through seven innings. The Tigers bullpen three runs in the last three. Cruz hit one of their four home runs tonight. Dogs bullpen has done well over the last six and a third. Murillo and Anderson with solo home runs in the ninth to cover a 5-3 deficit and send the game to extras. Let's see if now, Marsh, can, Marsh can keep that same mentality he had in the top of the 10th. Really came out firing, a little bit of time off. Swing and a miss, Joe Bear. And now they'll put the shift on for him, moving Harbor into shallow right field. Counts 0-2. Right. like that pitch from Marsh right there, change up. Definitely his third best. You're thinking fastball, curveball mostly. Hot shot, foul ball. And that's the first time anybody's been able to touch Marsh. Again, doubled up with the change up right there. That one up in the zone. Bit of a dangerous pitch to Joe Bear, who's three for four on the night. Had the big home run and a couple of well-struck singles. So he's been seeing the ball well. He's thrown strikes on 12 of his 14 pitches. Checks his swing right there. If I'm not mistaken, is that right? Let's see if I can track down the big breakdown here. And so Marsh, 10 of the first 11 for strikes. Outside, that's ball two. So I think 
think it's 13 out of 16 have been strikes, including a foul off. 2-2, breaking ball hitting. Came back with that big breaking ball. This time it bit Joe Bear in the leg. Yeah, normally a 12-6 breaker had a little bit of movement away from arm side. Didn't quite get to the top of that ball. Yeah, a pinch runner here for Joe Bear. Paxton Kling is going to pinch run. So Kling takes over as a pinch runner for Joe Bear. Lazo is definitely going to be sacrificing himself in this situation. Malazzo leads the team with five sacrifice bunts. Ball one, Malazzo. Tigers have only 11 sack bunts the entire season. Offered at it. It's one and one. Top of the 11th, Matt Stewart, Jason Jacobs, series opener. We've had fireworks here late in the game. 1-1 one, one pitch from Marsh, bunt, back to Marsh. Going to go to first, get the uh, out there as LaPlante covers the bag. And Kling goes to second with one down. Great job by Malazzo right there. Kept it simple, didn't try and do too much. Gave himself up. Make sure Kling got to second in scoring position. Did you think Marsh had a play at second? No, not at all. Second, he had to move off the mound away from second base. I yep. think he made the right decision right there. Trust the stuff. You got swing and miss stuff. At some point, you're probably going to need a strikeout. And that point is not here yet. I think you're still looking for that soft contact ground ball. Here's Sean Kenny, the Bulldogs pitching coach. Out to talk some strategy here with David and Marsh and Dugas coming to the plate. Oh, this is going to be a pinch hitter, pardon me. Dugas is due up, but Ben Nippolt has grabbed a bat. So they're going to bring in a left-handed bat to face Marsh right here. Nippolt on the season, 7 for 40. That's a 175 average, no homers and 7 RBI. He's 0 for 4 in conference play. Ball one to Nipple. Kling down at second base, one down here in the 11th. 1-0 pitch from Marsh, outside 2-0. Marsh now at 22 pitches through 11 in the first inning of work, the 10th inning for him. 2-0 pitch, breaking ball outside, 3-0. Ball four. First and second for the Tigers. Now that's a tough rock right there for Marsh. Maybe going for the strike a little early there. That 2-0 breaking ball, he wiped to it, so that was on him. Trying to go for that swing and miss, and I just think that's bad selection there with Morgan, who's been swinging a good bat to this point. Also left-handed hitter. He's one for five, through. but he's really hit the ball. He scorched yeah. the ball hard all night. Ball one to Morgan. Had a two home run game on Sunday. First of his career in that 14-13 hit and he lost to Mississippi State. 
He drove in six runs, scored five in that series against the Bulldogs last weekend. 1-0 pitch. Missed high, 2-0. Marsh really struggling with the strike zone now. Yeah, coming down a little bit from that emotional 10th inning that he had, really pitched on that emotion. Yep. Now it's gone. He's kind of coming back down to earth. Got to dig deep right here. Find the strike zone. Nobody warming up in the Georgia bullpen. I like this meeting right here from David. Boosting his confidence a little bit, saying, hey, we got this. Stay in the zone, trust your stuff. You don't have to do anything extra in this moment. Will David went out there to talk to Marsh. Morgan came over to talk to Coach Johnson. And Dylan Cruz is on deck. He slammed a home run back in the ninth. Looked like that put the game away, but it didn't. 2 0 pitch to Morgan, ball three. Nipples at first and Kling at second. And a 3-0 pitch from Marsh. Ball four, bases are loaded. He got three base runners in the inning, a hit by pitch and two walks. <laughs> the prospective number one pick in the MLB draft steps to the plate here in the 11th with the bases loaded. Marsh, ball one. And the LSU fans that have made their way to Foley Field tonight, letting the Georgia fans hear about it. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Breaking ball outside, it's 2-0. A lot of purple and gold here tonight. Two balls and no strikes to Dylan Cruz. Right down the heart of the plate, and it's two and one. Two for five. Single in the third. Solo homer in the ninth. Strike two. March is able to connect with the breaking ball. Looked like he kind of lost it there for a moment. Two balls, two strikes. Bases loaded. Breaking ball just off the plate. Three balls and two strikes. One down here in the 11th. Cold strike three. Marsh sends Dylan Cruz back to the dugout and now there's two down boy what a gutsy pitch right there from marsh really bearing down just missed with the breaking ball before thought it was a strike comes back with it this time gets the call big strikeout right there but it's not done yet here's tommy white up the middle, the plant gets to it, tosses to Murillo, and they got the out at second to end the inning. What a game-saving play by Mason LaPlante. Ball was headed into center field. Runs were going to score for LSU. LaPlante comes up with a web gem here in the top of the 11th. Another Sports Center top 10 nominee, and we'll head to the bottom of the 11th. We head to the bottom of the 11th at Foley Field with a win tonight against LSU and a Mississippi State loss to Texas A&M. The Dogs would clinch a berth in next week's SEC tournament. And right now, the Aggies lead the Bulldogs 7-5 in the bottom of the fifth. Here, we're tied at five. And Will David leading off the bottom half of the 11th against Thatcher Hurd. And that's ball one, Will David. 
scored the first run of the night for Georgia, gave Georgia their first hit of the night when he hit a solo homer off Paul Skeens back in the fifth. 1-0 pitch, inside strike, and it's 1-1. One and one. Boy, at that rehearsal, just really laying it out there for this LSU Tigers team. I mean, has really gotten better. Gave up the two home runs to allow the Dogs to extend this game, but has really pitched well, continuing to throw quality pitches. In the air, right side. Let's see if that's playable, and it's going to land in the bullpen for the Dogs. It's 1-2 and two now to David. Dogs got out of a bases loaded jam. In the 11th inning, Christian Marsh had worked himself into it with a hit batter, a couple of walks, and then he strikes out Dylan Cruz looking and gets a fabulous defensive play from Mason LaPlante on a ground ball hit up the middle by Tommy White. And that glanced off of Marsh's leg as well, slowed it down just enough for LaPlante to get to it. What a play LaPlante made, and a tough feed for Murillo to take at second. And now there was some pushing and shoving there at second base when Morgan went sliding in there, and I think both, I, I don't, I, pushing and shoving might be a hard way to describe it, but both benches were warned by the umpires. Chopper on the infield, Thompson, deep throw, got him one down. Outside of that one pop-up error that Thompson made, he has been strong at the sixth spot tonight. Yeah, he's done a great job right there. He's making a lot of difficult plays look pretty easy. Had the one blip, as you mentioned, uh, tough, tough time in the game for a fly ball to happen, and two of them happened in a row, and they were both very difficult. You guys able to squeeze the second of those two. And here is Marillo, who put a charge into one in the ninth to make it 5-4. One of the two solo home runs hit by the Bulldogs to send this game to extra innings. And ball one to Marillo. And, of course, Marillo hit it off of Hurd. Facing him for a second time. 1-0 pitch. It's in there for a strike, and it's one and one to Murillo. Has two of the Bulldogs' seven hits tonight. One one pitch. Tapper foul. Count one and two now to Murillo. Matt Stewart along with Jason Jacobs. Final Thursday night of the regular season in the Southeastern Conference. LSU currently what would be the number three seed in next week's tournament. One, two pitch, got him. Two down in the inning, Heard with the strikeout. That is the third for him since coming on in relief. And like I said, Heard's doing a great job. Very easy to get down on yourself after giving those two home runs up to no doubt. For this ball, you know, the ball game to be tied, he's just done nothing but get better since that moment. The plant check swing foul back to the screen. 0 and 1. The plant drove in the Bulldogs' second run back in the fifth with an RBI single after Murillo had reached on a double right in front of him. 0-1 pitch from Hurd in the air, foul out of play. One and make it 0-2. Hurd still bringing it at 94 miles per hour. Bottom of the 11th inning in Athens. 0-2 pitch, popped it up. Hurd takes it himself. Usually you don't want the pitcher to take it, but he was the only guy who could take it. Heading to the 12th, tied at five. We were tied at two in the eighth inning with Travinsky untied things with a home run to left. That made it 3-2. Then Thompson, two batters later, made it 4-2. It was 4-3 when Dylan Cruz went deep in the ninth. 5-3, but here come the Bulldogs. Murillo makes it 5-4, and then ben, ben Anderson. And that ball is strict, struck and hit off the wall. Pardon me, got caught in the middle of words there, and Travinsky slides there into second base with a double. 
So Travinsky gets things started here in the 12th inning with a stand-up double. And Pearson's going to bat for a second time with Travinsky out at second base immediately in scoring position. And Marsh is now at 36 pitches. A lot of wear and tear on Marsh there in that 11th inning. He was able to survive without giving up any runs. Ball one to Pearson. Struck out his only time up so far tonight. Pops out of David's glove and goes to the backstop. The rare pass ball for the Bulldogs allows Travinsky to get to third. And a great job there by Pearson. Marsh yanks that inside. It's already kind of tight and crammed with Pearson squaring the bunt. He pulled that bat back right in the eye path of David. I think David had a tough time picking that up, and the ball scoots by him. Just the fourth pass ball for Georgia catchers this year. That's the fewest in the conference. Count is 2-0 here, and the infield comes in on the grass. 1-1 to Pearson. He hits this one to deep right field. Spikes goes back to the wall. At the wall, it's gone into the trees. Two-run homer for Josh Pearson puts LSU on top 7-5. Talked about that deep bench. Pearson coming in off the bench earlier in the game defensively. Does a great job there at owning the situation. Infield in, you got to get something to the outfield to guarantee that runs in. And he gets a little bonus right there by driving it out of the yard. Marsh was behind 2-0 and again. A tough, tough job Marsh has coming in. Such an emotional time there in the 10th inning. Looked outstanding. Strikes out the side. Then he's got to come back. Deals with the very stressful 11th back out there for the 12th. Maybe just running out of steam. First home run of the season for Pearson. A two-run shot to put LSU on top. 7-5 here in the top of the 12th. And will that finally be the hit that puts this game away? We've seen so many of them by both teams, and you thought, well, that's going to do it. And until now, nothing has. But Josh Pearson with eight home runs a year ago, his first one this season. Puts LSU on top by two, and Chandler Marsh is done for the night. So Marsh was really strong for the Bulldogs in the 10th when he struck out all three batters on 11 pitches. But runs out of gas here in the 12th. Here is Josh Pearson just a few moments ago. Went down and got it and clubbed it over the right field wall over the 370 marker. As Pravinsky greets him at the plate. And so Josh Pearson hits the home run and Will Pearson comes on to pitch for Georgia. So he's got Thompson do up next. And his job is to try to get through this LSU order with no more damage done, and Georgia will have to try to pull off even more dramatics. His last outing worked two-thirds of an inning of relief in the 14-12 loss at Missouri last Saturday. Gave up a run on one hit, hit a batter.
for the season, making his 18th appearance all out of the pin. 0-1, 5.75 ERA, 12 walks, 12 strikeouts in 20-plus innings. And Pearson's one of those guys, he gets in good rhythm. He, he can be tough to square up and, and do some soft contact, but again, you look at the uh, strikeouts to walk ratio, when he loses his zone, it's tough for him to get back into it. So if he can get in that rhythm and find that strike zone early on, he can be very effective. So Thompson, Kling, and Malazzo do up. 7, 8, and 9 do up for the Tigers now that Pearson in the game following the two-run homer by LSU's Pearson. And Jordan Thompson batting for the sixth time in this game. Homered in the eighth. Walked twice back in the second and in the fourth. Has a couple of stolen bases as well. That was off of starting pitcher Jarvis Evans a long time ago. Strike one to Thompson. Matt Stewart along with Jason Jacobs. Start of this three-game SEC series, the final one of the regular season. LSU at uh, 40 and 12 on the year. 17 and nine in the conference, second in the West. Hot shot right into the LSU dugout. Dogs at 28 and 24. 10 and 17. Tied for sixth in the East. 12th overall. Trying to lock down one of the final two spots in the SEC tournament, which starts on Tuesday. That ball is struck well. Deep right field. Back at the wall. Spikes reaches up and cannot come down with it. Home run. And delayed reaction by the LSU dugout as they now come pouring out of the dugout. They had to wait to see if Spikes came up with it. He could not, and Thompson just clubbed his second home run of the night to give LSU an 8-5 lead. Yeah, what a night this young man's having. Played great defensively. He mentioned just the one error on a tough fly ball. Goes backside bomb for his second backside home run. And in his last three at bats, this one driven well into the outfield. Spikes doing everything he can, but you see just about six inches short as that ball disappears into the trees. I'd say he has redeemed himself for the error that he yes, made. Yes, he has. And here's Kling batting for the first time. Came on as a pinch runner in the 11th. Ball one to Kling. Paxton Kling out of Roaring Springs, Pennsylvania. Has rebounded from a hamstring injury this year. Caused him to miss a big chunk in the month of April. Playing in his 42nd game, half of which he's come off the bench and played in. One and one outside, two and one. Oftentimes used as a pinch runner, as he was tonight. 300, four homers, nine RBI. 2 1 pitch to Kling, hit on the ground to Murillo. Nice, easy hop. One out in the inning. So has LSU finally gotten enough to put this game away? The way this game's going, I don't think there is enough. It just seems like the Bulldogs are sticking around. You've got Hurd, who's been out there for quite some time now. Some action going in the LSU bullpen. But again, that LSU bullpen, uh, it's some question marks coming okay. out of there. So the Dogs start 9-1-2, start do up in the bottom half of this inning. And, Spikes, Anderson, and Condon. We just feel like those guys, very dangerous part of the lineup, do up. Strike two to Malazzo. Still looking for his first hit tonight. Outside one and two. Officially 0 for 4, put down a sack bun in the 11th that set up what was looked like it was going to be a big inning for LSU. They loaded the bases but failed to score. One, two, outside, two and two. Oh, 
All eight of the Tigers' runs tonight have come on their five home runs. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Outside three and two. Two-run homer by Joe Bear in the second. Solo homers from Travinsky. Thompson the first time. Cruz, two-run homer from Pearson, and then another homer by Thompson. 3-2 pitch. That ball is hit towards the gap. Spikes is going to be able to get there, however, for out number two. And here's Napol. Playing second base now, batting for the second time. Pinch hit for Dugas in the 11th and walked. Ball one in the bolt. There's a strike one and one. About half the crowd still here at Foley Field. As they've now played over three and a half hours trying to settle this one. Ball low, two and one. As you mentioned, Jason, the dogs will have Spikes, Anderson, and Condon do up in the bottom half of the 12th. Three balls, one strike to Napolt. Hot shot over the head of LaPlante in the right field. Hit number 13 for the Tigers. Napolt with a couple of good at bats there coming off the bench late. Mm -hmm. Drew the walk in his first at bat. Crisp single to right, right there. They're working the count pretty well. Off of Pearson. Pearson going to the edges, trying to get him to fish, but Polt was not biting. Here's Morgan. One for five tonight. And gets hit on the leg. Hopefully he's going to be okay. Has yet to get up. It looked like he got him right on the shin. It looks like, it, like his cleats kind of got stuck in the batter's box. Couldn't quite get out of the way. That ball was bearing down on him right out of the hand of Pearson, who just yanked that fastball. I think he's going to be okay, but that's going to hurt a little bit. Sounded like it might have got him right in the shin bone. So he hobbles his way down to first base. And yeah, there was just nowhere to go. Oh, right on the foot. Yeah, he got, got some bone there. Didn't sound like me. So first and second for the Tigers with two down, and here's Dylan Cruz. You see back in the 11th inning when Joe Bear led the inning off getting hit by a pitch, he kind of took it with some pride right there. A little tougher to take with pride, that one hurt. So here's Dylan Cruz struck out looking with the bases loaded and an inning to go. Ball one to Cruz. Got to concentrate here if you're Will Pearson because Cruz can bust this thing open and really put it out of reach. Yeah, you really got to focus on just executing. I think absolutely Cruz can do some damage if you mess up, but you got to trust your stuff. 1-0 in there for a strike one and one. Cruz is two for six tonight. One one pitch inside, and it's two and one. You got Tommy White on deck right behind him if you can't get him out. Two balls, one strike. Dylan Cruz, two aboard, three runs in in the inning, strike at the knees, two and two.
This is a real critical pitch right here. Pearson, 2-2, two, two. called strike three. Second time in a row that Dylan Cruz has been called out with men on base. He's left five men on his last two at-bats. It's 8-5. Bottom of the 12th inning, dogs down to their final three outs. They've had some opportunities here, but now LSU has reclaimed the three-run lead. And this is the biggest deficit for Georgia tonight as Spikes leads off the inning. Anderson and Condon also do up. There's a strike from Hurd. Spikes flew out to center field in the ninth. His only time up takes a big hack. It's 0-2. Yeah, Spikes a little too big right there. You just got to find a way on base here, set the table for for Condon, Tate, and Harbor, who's gonna, if it comes down to it, Harbor's gonna need to get a big knock, and he's had a tough night to this point. Ball one. So Hurd has gone four innings here in relief. He's faced 16 batters. His pitch count is now at 60. Yeah, he's really gutted this thing out. Gotta give him a lot of credit. One, two pitch. Got him on four pitches. Strikeout for Hurd, and the dogs are down to their final two outs. Spikes just a little bit too much right there. A little too big of a mindset. Situation leading off an inning down by three. He's just trying to find a way on. A couple of big swings from him and a pitch that he really shouldn't have gone after, looking to drive it. And here is Ben Anderson. Last time up, cranked one over the right field wall to tie it up at five in the ninth. A lot has changed since then. Yeah, Georgia has not had a base runner since that hit. 0-1 pitch. Bouncer on the infield. Nice play by the second baseman, Nippolt, and there's two down. I think that back Tate reached on a, on a single. But other than that, just one base runner. That was a race on a double play. So, again, Hurd really bearing down since he gave that home run up to Anderson. And Charlie Condon. Strike one to Charlie. He's 0 for 5 tonight. His average has dropped from 4.15 to 4.04. Strike two. And now the dogs down to their final strike. As LSU tries to gut this one out and pull out an 8-5 victory in Athens. Ball one. I mean, you get the feeling that whoever ends up winning, LSU is certainly in great position right here. Really, really kind of an extraordinary win because they've just, they've thrown heavyweight punches at each other all night. One, two pitch, got him! LSU, an 8-5 victory over the Georgia Bulldogs. As they get knocked around a little bit, but they're the ones who get up off the deck out of the corner and come up with the knockout blow and defeat Georgia tonight, 8-5. And they, at least for another night, stay in the hunt for the SEC regular season championship as Arkansas has already won tonight. Yeah, great victory by LSU. Really gutsy performance from both teams. Georgia on the losing end really expended a lot of emotion in this game only to come out on the losing side. You wonder, they got to have to dig deep throughout the rest of this series to make it competitive as uh, this has got to be a deflating loss for them and an uplifting win for the LSU Tigers. We're back tomorrow at 6 o'clock Eastern for game two in the series. And now for my partner Jason Jacobs and our entire SEC network team, I'm Matt Stewart. Good night from Athens where the Tigers got out a big one and beat the Dogs 8-5.